So again, good morning to everybody. It's a pleasure to see you all again after one year. As you know, the AfriLab meetings are uh, annual. So welcome back to, to our network meeting. Uh, today, we are keeping the meeting short. It's only three hours meeting. And uh, as you might know, this meeting focus on decision-making only. All trainings are being implemented in the form of webinars on different topics in different languages and at different times throughout the years to uh, basically facilitate, uh, to facilitate the, the process uh, worldwide no? and also make a, a good use of the time of uh, the trainers and serve as many regions as possible, overcome language barriers and so on. So today we start well with some opening remarks and I will start from this before doing the endorsement of the agenda from the current chair of AfriLab, Mr. Joseph Uponi. Mr. Uponi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. It's a pleasure to uh, be at this meeting again, this time of the year. Uh, we've had, uh, some trouble sometimes with the COVID and all other things, but uh, somehow we have managed to keep going. It's my great pleasure that we're able to hold this meeting at this time. I want to appreciate all the efforts of the uh, different nations who have been able to set up their uh, national soil laboratory networks. And uh, most of my colleagues who have tried to keep in touch in these past two years. It's been a challenging two years but also a fruitful two years with the various trainings that we're able to organize, uh, courtesy of uh, our experts from different parts, the GLP training, the training on uh, equipment inventory and laboratory maintenance, and even the individual contacts that we have had. For those nations that are yet to set up their networks, we hope that uh, taking off from here, we'll be able to get more national soil laboratory networks in place. I hope that these three hours of meeting will be very fruitful. Something very significant is going to happen. We are going to do an election uh, to select uh, the governance of the network. I would encourage every one of us to participate actively in order to uh, uh, make the best selection and hoping that we move forward from here to have a much stronger AfriLab network. So once again, welcome to all of you and thank you for all the good job I've done thus far. Hoping for better times ahead. Thank you, Lucrezia. And everyone. Thank you very much, Joseph. Now I would like to give the, the floor to Ms. Nopman and Suvanang, the chair of Glossolam. Ms. Suvanang, the floor is yours. Good afternoon and good evening, dear all. It is an honor and privilege for me to welcome you on behalf of the Porcelain Chair to this uh, after that meeting, which this year the meeting organized in Zoom platform as the world has changed since the COVID-19 pandemic and we can no longer do a lot of things that it is used to do. However, Porcelain can still take advantage of the situation and make that transition to online activity like conduct of the web webinar meeting and production of the virtual learning materials. This year, we would like to focus on the role of the national mechanism in promoting the harmonization of the soil testing method and the quality data and also the empowerment of the network. The meeting will focus on mostly, as Lucasia already mentioned, we will mostly focus on the decision-making since the training can be provided in the form of the web INA throughout of the years. Ultimately, restaurant specific work plan will be discussed and developed during the meeting. AfriLab is going to have three years old now after the establishment in 2019. At the time, the situation of the lab in global is a black box with a blur picture. We don't know how much on your neighboring country lab performance and how they are working on the same testing method. 
but now we have more clear picture and know each other better. We have a group of friends as network that can share and exchange the knowledge. We are succeeding in a way that three years ago we never could have imagined. Our work doesn't just enlist our own country, but it enlists our global community and could benefit the global initiative and support the big data analysis with the reliable and comparable data. I am very appreciative with the outcome from the network, either the capacity building and the number of the SOP that we can work and harmonize in the same way with the good quality control. And absolutely, I need to extend my deep appreciation to the GSP FAO, the GSP Secretariat team for supporting the efforts to further develop the role of the national mechanism for promoting the harmonization of the soil testing method and quality data and the empowerment of the network. I want particularly thanks to the chair, the vice chair and all the technical experts for their commitment and leadership for the encouragement provide for this work. Finally, I would like to express appreciation to the invaluable logistical support provided by many staff members of the AFILAP in the contribution to support by providing the information as need and also contribute to work as leader in the process of the harmonization and trainers. I would like to sincere thanks to Mr. Christian Hyman from IRD France, Michel and colleagues from BTS, England for their kind support to prepare the soil sample for AFILAP regional PT in this year. And also the initiative to organize some training courses for the AFILAP. We have coming a long way. We see you giving us precious time with our family to give the, that time to our activities. Please be assured that your delicate time, your achievement and your value is noticed and much appreciated. Now we will move forward together to continue to improve the quality of our data and also working in the same way so that our data that we have produced will benefit to the user, stakeholder, and for the policy maker. High quality and comparable data will improve evidence-based decision-making in many fields, including sustainable soil management, food security and nutrition, climate adaptation and mitigation and reliable SOC stock calculation. This year, we would like to extend our work down scale to the national lab in order to provide the opportunity for the local staff to learn and improve way of working. The national network will help to fix the barrier of the language problem and also provide you the opportunity for your local lab to present their challenge and need from country level to the consideration of the postal land. And as usual, I hope that you will support us. In our side, we have provided many documents to support for this establishment and benchmarking via our postal land webpage. I wish you all a very successful meeting and assure you of the full support of myself, not as a wise chair and our secretariat team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anak. Thank you so much. And also thanks to Joseph for the great uh, welcoming remarks you provided. Going back to the agenda, well, for those of you that are new to the network, my name is Lucrezia Caon, and I'm the coordinator of Glossolan. And I'm assisted in this work by my colleague, Mr. Filippo Benedetti, that you still see on screen. And you will have the opportunity to talk uh, later on uh, this morning. Uh, going back to the agenda, the first thing we will do this morning is to provide you some updates on Glossolan, on what we have been doing during this year and uh, the most urgent issues we will have to face in the coming year. Then uh, we will have some updates on Aprilab, so really focused on your regional network. And this time, uh, we will also try to provide you some information on ongoing projects in your region and eventually your country, and also tell you how you, we, you can, uh, with our support, 
mobilize uh, some financial resources uh, at FAO, no? so get some, some funds uh, in your country or eventually in the region. Uh, we will move forward with uh, uh, reviewing and identifying your regional needs so that we can try to tackle them through, for example, the organization of uh, specific trainings. And ultimately, we will review the position of AfriLab in Glossolan. As you know, Glossolan, uh, the Glossolan meeting is also an annual meeting, and uh, this year will take place at the end of November. So in that occasion, the AfriLab uh, uh, chair will report on uh, your specific needs, for example, or on the decisions that you are making at this meeting. However, uh, although the AfriLab chair will officially represent you, you are all welcome and encouraged to attend the Glossolan meeting and uh, still express your opinion no, on the topics in the agenda. And before closing the meeting, we will review the governance of uh, AfriLab because the mandate of the chair and vice chairs of uh, uh, the network came to an end. So we will have time also to greet them and uh, thank them for the hard work they have been doing over the last two years and then elect the new chair and vice chair. So right now I would like to move to the first item that's uh, still on me. So allow me to share my screen. So updates on Glossolan. Um, I put a few slides uh, uh, to introduce new members of AfriLab and Glossolan to, to the network. So our network was established in 2017 to harmonize soil laboratory methods and data and build the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis. Ultimately, we work uh, on uh, three plus one main areas of work. So quality assurance and quality control and the organization of national proficiency tests fall into this uh, uh, thematic area. Then uh, we harmonize standard operating procedures, and uh, we provide also standard procedures, not only on methods, but also on, uh, on other topics like uh, health and safety, uh, equipment, uh, and so on. And then we try to help laboratories in terms of equipment. So from the very basics, so the procurement of equipment, then its use, its maintenance, and uh, if possible, we try to provide laboratories with some equipment as well. And uh, within this, uh, this area of work, we also have our initiative on soil spectroscopy. Then in December 2020, we established a sub-network focused on fertilizers. So this network is called INFA, the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis, and indeed works on the harmonization of fertilizer, um, fertilizer um, uh, uh, method, fertilizer quality assessment method. Glossolan is organized in a regional soil laboratory networks, and in this regard, we are in AfriLab, AfriLab is composed by all the countries you see on screen. And in each country, we have member laboratories that can rely on one laboratory that was appointed by the national focal point of the GSP. So basically the representative of the global soil partnership at the, usually the Ministry of Agriculture of your country as the national reference laboratory for the initiative. And uh, this laboratory has a big role in your country because it is the one that should coordinate, support, and facilitate the implementation of all Glossolan activities at the country level. Okay, it's like uh, your focal point, let's say, and you, you can submit requests to, to them and ask for support, and then they talk to us. Go to, to Glossolan and we try to address the, the, the things we can together. 
At present, we have uh, 740 laboratories registered, and as you can see, 148 come from Africa. So we have quite a good number of members from the African region. If you want to learn more on the laboratories that are registered in, uh, in Glossoland from your, uh, from your country or from the region, you can consult the Glossoland interactive map that is this one on screen and you can access it at the, this link. Still, everything is available on the Glossoland website. So please uh, use it. Indeed, Glossoland is doing its best to keep this webpage updated and available in the six UN languages. So English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese. This is an overview of uh, uh, the homepage, but we have a lot of sub pages. And in these sub pages, we have also um, frequently asked questions, not per each topic. So please consult it. And, and learn more about uh, uh, how our, our activities are implemented and what are our activities, okay? Then we are always uh, happy and available to answer uh, questions by email, but uh, this might take some time from our side, meaning that we might send you a late reply because we are overloaded of emails. So if you are in urge to get an answer and out of curiosity, please consult our website. Glossolan publications are also available in the six UN languages plus others. So for example, if you want to translate any of our material in your local language, which means one language that is not an official UN language, that's very possible. Please contact us and we will be happy to support in the process and also get it published online. In this regard, uh, we would like to thank all of you that served and are still serving as translators for the initiative. Your work is greatly helping us uh, to implement uh, the activities at the national and regional scale. So for those of you that are not translators yet, uh, please let us know if you would like to become a Glossolan translator. This is a volunteering uh, job but usually people do it for the good of their country no? or, or the region. Um, again, we are also preparing training videos to facilitate the implementation of uh, the documents we, we produce, especially standard operating procedures on different topics, so also like health and safety, preparation of soil samples for internal and external quality control, and of course, the standard operating procedures on the method. Um, yeah, also in this case, Glossolan would like to thank all laboratories that are recording training videos. And this also, uh, again, like helping us to implement our activities at the national and regional scale. For those of you that are interested in uh, recording and training videos, please let us know. We will provide you all information and support needed um, and uh, in this regard, please note that we already published a, a manual, let's say a very short practical manual on how to record the training videos for the initiative. This is something I told you at the very beginning, um, based on the decision made at the fourth Glossolan meeting, all Resolan meetings will focus on decision making only. So all trainings are being organized and implemented in the form of webinars. We have a web page again on, on our web page <laughs> on capacity development. The page is still under construction, which means that you know we have to improve it. But uh, the content is updated. So please consult it and register to the webinars we are organizing. Uh, if in, on this page you will indeed have the list of uh, trainings, so webinars uh, we are organizing. In it uh, you will have the title of the training, the date and time and language of the training because we are organizing the same training in different uh, uh, times and in different languages, okay, to, to as I told you overcome language and time zone barriers and so on. We really want to support you as much as possible. Then you will have information on the trainers and a short abstract on the training session. So before the, the training takes place, 
the webinar take place, uh, you will see at the end of, uh, of the space dedicated to that specific webinar, uh, two icons. Here you see like the details of the event and then the link to register. Okay, you click on here and register to the webinar. After the webinar is implemented, you will still have the details of the event, the presentation so that you can download it, the recording of the webinar so you can re-listen to the intervention of the trainers, and then eventually a highlight that is basically for a communication purposes, like a short article for the press. Webinars on soil chemistry, these are the ones we have in the agenda so far. The first uh, webinar on the implementation of the Olsen team method in Spanish took place last week. And uh, these ones are the ones that are coming. So as you see, we will have also the Olsen, uh, the implementation of the Olsen, oops, Olsen P method in English on 5 November. Uh, the time has to be confirmed by the trainers. So it took us a while to organize all of this because we are looking for good trainers, no? And also trainers that are available actually to provide such training. If you wish to become one of our trainers, we really welcome it. We are looking for as many trainers as possible, cover all languages and address all needs. Looking at the webinars on soil spectroscopy, I don't know if you are interested in the topic, but we also organized a series of webinars on the topic. Five sessions were already implemented. So we started from the very basic uh, information on soil spectroscopy, and we are getting a bit more into more complex um, uh, aspects of the matter uh, over the time. The sixth session, that is the last one planned for this year, will take place on 28th of October. And in this case, uh, all these uh, webinars are in uh, English, but we will uh, try to add subtitles in different languages to them. So as I told you, well, we would like also in this case to thank all experts that made themselves available for, to prepare and give the webinars. And uh, uh, we are making a call to you all if you wish to become trainers of Glossron and also provide webinars. What we are doing in terms of standard operating procedure, well, we are a bit behind on this work because some SOPs require more, more time than they expected to, to basically get set and, uh, and start the harmonization process. But let's say that uh, at present, we, we are harmonizing the global matrices for all these parameters. So physical parameters, chemical parameters, and biological parameters. These are the parameters that Glossolon, so you basically, the, who of you was at the meeting last year, at the Glossolon meeting last year, agreed to harmonize in 2020-2021. So by the end of today, we will get to a new list of SOPs to harmonize in 2021-2022. And this would be your proposal, so the after that proposal in terms of harmonizing SOP uh, that will be presented at the next Glossolan meeting. As I told you, we faced uh, some delays in the preparation of the SOPs, but we should be able to publish them by the end of the year. So overall, we faced major delays on the preparation of the matrices, especially on soil biological parameters, because we had few experts in the working group and the little inputs on the procedure implemented for each method by laboratories. This here does not relate to the fact that people does not want to work on the SOPs or laboratories do not want to submit inputs, but it relates to the fact that there are few experts that are really experts on those uh, methods and uh, that few laboratories are using these methods. So this is an issue that I would like to discuss with you um, in item four, if I remember well. So I will uh, quickly pass through it and update you on the organization of the Glossolan Proficiency Test 2021. So I hope that you answered my email with a short survey on it and that uh, ultimately you have an interest in, um, in participating to this proficiency test. 
we have 280 sets of soil samples available, and each set contain, contain 10 self-sealed bags of soil labeled with a unique sample code. Now, in each bag, there are 10 grams of homogenized soil material. Again, at present, we have 249 laboratories that replied the surveys. And of these, eight laboratories uh, uh, told us that they do not wish to participate to this city because of different reasons. Now, uh, this does not mean that all these uh, laboratories will uh, participate to the PT, because still we have to ensure some geographical balance. So for example, if we have uh, 30 laboratories from a country that express an interest in participating to the PT, uh, we might not allow them all to participate, but we might organize a national PT for them, okay? because otherwise it would not be fair to other countries. But uh, be reassured that we will involve at least one laboratory per country. Our hope is indeed that of having at least one laboratory per country participate into the PT. Then another selection criteria is the number of parameters. So we are giving great attention to carbon, followed by phosphorus and nitrogen. So for example, we had some cases in which laboratories said that they could not analyze any of these parameters, but they wish to participate to the PT. So in this case also, I don't foresee the participation in the PT because they cannot perform the analysis, uh, but we will surely take them into consideration for future PTs. Then another parameter is the method of analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, the principle that first come, first serve. Well, in this case, we did not uh, uh, surpass the number of 280 laboratories uh, that express an interest in this PT. So I think that this four, fourth uh, uh, criteria uh, will not take place. Um, so decision on the laboratories to participate in the PT will be made uh, by the end of October. So all laboratories that uh, replied the survey, we receive an email in this regard, and uh, we plan to ship the samples in November. So participating laboratories will be asked to analyze the soil samples for organic carbon, available phosphorus, and total nitrogen in this order of priority. There will be no replicate, no replicas. Uh, for those of you that participated to the proficiency test last year, you might recall that last time we sent you three bags of soil and we asked you to uh, repeat uh, the analysis three times per each bag. In this case, uh, we will not ask you to do it. You will receive one, uh, 10 bags of uh, 10 grams of soil each, and you should perform only one analysis, one type, I mean, like multiple analysis, but uh, only one per, per each bag. Uh, and in these regards, uh, because the amount of soil we are sending you is limited, it's only 10 grams, uh, well, we are kindly asking you to not use it all for doing only one analysis, but uh, to analyze uh, these three parameters, no? So carbon, phosphorus, and uh, nitrogen. Uh, but do not worry about it. The ones of you that will participate in the PT, we receive instructions on this regard. And uh, we are really trying to guide you through the process as much as possible by also providing you an indication here you see like of the soil needed for the analysis so that you make uh, good calculations on the amount of soil you need before starting the, the PT. And uh, these amounts refer to the amounts reported in the Glossolan SOPs. So please decide what analysis to conduct before uh, starting the analysis itself, taking into consideration that you have only 10 grams of soil. So here I reported you an example. Carbon, you can decide to analyze carbon by human, 
do mass, then you decide maybe to do two analyses for phosphorus by using Olsen and the Bray-1, and then one an analysis with the, of nitrogen with Sheldahl. So the total amount of soil you would need for doing all these four analyses is 10 grams. If, for example, you also decide to analyze the, um, the samples by Walkley and Black, uh, then you should review the other analyses you will be performing because if you see the amount of soil you need to conduct all these analyses exceed the amount we are sending you. But all of this will be in destruction of the PT. Another important thing you should remember when participate when actually doing the participating to the PT this year is that the results should be submitted through an online platform. Okay, the Glossolan PT result submission platform. Now, only those of you that will participate to the PT will have access to this platform because by the time we send you um, the information on the, on the samples, how to conduct the PT and so on, and we actually send you the samples, you will receive a unique identification code. It's a long code of uh, 10 numbers that you should use to log in to the app. Okay, and then information on how to use this platform will be provided, but it's very friendly. Ultimately, I would like to inform you on the procurement. So those of you that uh, um, participated uh, to the proficiency test last year in 2019 at, and demonstrated to not need of any training were granted some equipment based, of course, on the need of the laboratory. So in Africa, Glossolan uh, provided or is uh, currently delivering equipment to Botswana, Kenya, Zambia, and Niger. Support was also provided to laboratories in Liberia, Uganda, and Rwanda through other projects that relate to Glossolan. Okay, so these are the countries we are currently supporting in terms of equipment. Information on the equipment uh, we are providing to laboratories are available on the Glossolan Equipment Interactive Map that I will show you now. And to learn more on uh, the Glossolan program on soil laboratory equipment, please visit this website here. But these are all, <laughs> all uh, sub pages of the Glossolan webpage, so please visit that page first. So this is a, just an overview of, uh, of our procurement map. As you can see, well, in this case, I selected Botswana. You will have the name of the country, information on the beneficiary laboratory. And, uh, they are beneficiary because they participated in the PT 2019. And these are information on the equipment that we provided them, the status of delivery and uh, the donor. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I don't know if you have any question or if everything was clear. We will get back to the SOPs in item four, I believe. I don't know if there are questions. Let me open the chat. No. Okay. So, if there are no questions, maybe we can move to item two. And uh, I would give the word to my colleague uh, Filippo to, to provide some updates on uh, uh, Aprila. Thank you, Lucrezia. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Filippo Benedetti, and I work in the GSP Secretariat together with Lucrezia. I'm working with her to coordinate the activities of Glossolam. Um, welcome to this meeting. I am very happy to have you here. And um, I want to recap what Lucrezia told about the uh, global trend on Glossolan. So as you know, as we already mentioned last year, in the last two years, the network uh, doubled its size. And we now almost reach um, 750 laboratories registered in the network. Um, very good results. I mean, like this is a global network and more we are, more we are aware on the needs of laboratories and on the activities, activities then, then we would implement. So it's important that we have 
more labs in order to uh, allow them to join our work plan and also to know what they need. And um, as you can see on the right, um, we have different regional networks and AfriLab is uh, together with the European one, the second uh, greatest the, uh, regional network. Um, so it's almost, oh, it has almost 150 labs registered. And um, here you can see that also the regional network in Africa is increasing. And since last year, since the meeting we have uh, in October 2020, the second April lab meeting, uh, 27 new laboratories registered in the network. So as you can see now, we are almost reaching the threshold of uh, 150 laboratories registered in the Africa in the Africa, in the African network. Um, still, we have some countries that are not registering the network, at least here uh, in the upper list. Um, uh, some of them may do not have uh, any labs because of the small size or islands, uh, but some of them for sure they have. And we are working with the um, Global Soil Partnership Focal Points to involve um, some labs of the country within the network, at least one, to be nominated as National Reference Laboratory of the country. Um, still, if you have any contacts in those countries, please let us know because you can also help us in that, in, um, in reaching these countries. And uh, if you have any colleagues working in, in, in the country list in the upper part of the slide, please let us know so we can implement our activities in those countries as well and allow these countries to have representatives in Africa and in Grosovan. Uh, still, there are also some countries with no uh, national reference laboratory that has been nominated yet. As you know, in each country we have different, uh, different laboratories. In some countries we have a lot. Um, and each country has in one lab that uh, has been nominated as National Reference Laboratory. And what does it mean? That this lab is, um, was nominated by the GSP focal point of that country to, be, to serve as a direct facilitator of glutathione activities implementation within the country. Um, but I will talk about this later. They have a specific role, especially in, um, in implementing and developing the national networks. Uh, some countries don't, do not have this uh, lab nominated yet, and we're also working on this. These are Mali, Somalia, and Uganda. Uh, I, I know that some of the um, new comes from these countries, and I want to tell you that we are working on this closely with the focal point of your country to in, encourage them to nominate a lab. Um, now, uh, as Lucrezia mentioned, we have the regional networks, which is, which is really the, the, the skeleton, the structure of the network now, and allow us to downscale glossary activities within the, the region and uh, adapt the activities within the regional context. Last year, in 2020, during the second Africa Lab meeting, if you remember, we launched you, we, we present you the national networks that Glossary wants to implement. So we would like to have a further step and better implement our activities to the national context. In this regard, the national networks, uh, the National Soil Laboratory Networks, or NASULAN, um, has been established. Um, and we are we launched them and we are supporting countries to develop these networks. Why we want to do this? Of course, because if the scale is uh, closer to the, to, the, to the national context, we can improve the, the, efficacy, the, the efficiency of the of this um, implementation, we can develop like specific programs according to the national context, and we can even reach a larger number of labs in the um, in the uh, in, in the country. Of course, yeah, this is some of the tasks, some of the activities that the national networks should implement. Uh, I want to recap them very briefly because we already present last year, and all this material is available on Glossal website. So we uh, involved, we invite you to, to consult our the website, the web page on national networks. But yes, you can see the um, I released here a few of these tasks. Uh, so Nesolan are um, really important because they can is a powerful tool to enlarge the network, as I already mentioned. So um, laboratories within the national networks should motivate other laboratories in the country to register in Glossolan in the national networks and in AFRILAB. 
Why? Once again, because more we are a better, a better view of the regional need we have. And the more laboratories are in the, in, the, in the network, more activities we can implement. There is more knowledge, and more knowledge means more uh, knowledge sharing also. So more we are, more we know, more things we can implement. Uh, Nasolan can facilitate the implementation of good activities because we can then uh, implement trainings, uh, quality control procedures, uh, other activities to the local context. We can implement them regionally through AFILAB and then at the national level through the Nasolan. We can also uh, advertise, indeed, the Gosolan, as I just mentioned, the Gosolan activities um, within, within the country. No? So even this meeting of today, uh, if a network is already established in the country, we can just inform them that, you know, AFILAB meeting is taking place next week, so more labs will be able to join it. Um, national networks are also important to, um, as I mentioned already, to transfer the, what has been uh, achieved and learned at the global level during Glossoland or AFILAB activities. For instance, if Glossal organized a training and just few labs from the country were able to join, then these labs can then share the knowledge acquired during the global or regional training to the other laboratories within the country. Moreover, when you meet together, this is very important, the Nasolan meetings where all the laboratories of the country meet together is very important so they can discuss about the common challenges they have, the common needs, in order to implement and develop a work plan that can face what are what have been identified as the main need of the country, for the labs operating in the country. Moreover, together, once you identify what are the main need of your network, of your national network, you can work to um, mobilize and explore financial resource um, opportunities to implement the work plan and activities that are reported in the work plan. For instance, if all the labs agree that um, quality control is a main issue in the country, and we would like to organize a proficiency test, then you can start propose, uh, working on a project proposal to find the needed financial resource to implement the PT at the national level. And here you have an image of uh, an online meeting we had with the laboratories in Senegal. Um, during the second meeting, this was the second meeting of the, of the Nazolan in Senegal. As you know, in COVID times, it's not easy to have a face-to-face -face meeting. So we are lucky because we have all this technology available and it's possible then to have online meetings to save time, but also to still be able to uh, discuss about the, the, the activities of the national network. Um, it, as I mentioned, you can organize proficiency tests at the national level. I think Nazolan is the only way very effective to, to organize PT at the national level because all the labs are inside you discuss and you can easily organize um, the PT, you know, uh, concerning the PT, one of the main issues is sending the samples from one country to another, while if the PT is organized at the national level, this is much easier because you don't have to cross the border with the sample. The samples are collected within the country and shared among laboratories operating within the same country. So the PT also, its organization is much easier. Um, Nazolan is also very important that you communicate uh, continuously and actively with the chair of Glossolan and the chair of the Resolan. And uh, as I will show you now, uh, and as we present you last year, we have uh, web, page, web pages, uh, national networks web pages, um, where each country profile is reported. So for each country, we have information on the activities, on the brief history of the networks, on the main needs of the laboratories and the main needs of the network. And also some uh, brief information on the laboratories within the network. And there's a map to show where they are uh, located within the country. And do not forget that we are here to support you. You may have issue for sure, as you already uh, told us last year. I remember many of you told us, okay, well, there is COVID, we cannot meet. Uh, or um, we don't have enough financial resources to organize the meeting or the activities of the Nazolan. Once again, I'm telling you, we are here to support you. So please don't be shy, do not hesitate to contact us and we can help you to find the financial resource needed for your activities, 
to write project proposals to be submitted to find these financial resources. We can facilitate the organization of the activities. We can help you with the technology if needed to organize the Zoom meetings. We can be present there. As you can see, me, I was there. The chair and the, and the vice chair of um, AFILAP can join as well. Uh, the chair and vice chair of Brussels can support you as well. We are all here to support you. These networks, uh, national networks, are part of AFILAB and Brussels. This means that we can share the experience and the knowledge, especially also in regards of um, meeting organization and training opportunities. And um, I want to briefly show you also the, the role of the National Reference Lab. As I told you, one, each country has one lab uh, serving as National Reference Lab that is nominated by the focal point of the country within GSP. These National Reference Laboratories should take the leadership in implementing the activities of the NASO and establishing the networks. So you should take the role um, of moderating the discussion to organize PT, the meetings, training sessions, uh, look, uh, finding out what are the main needs of the laboratories within your country. National Reference Laboratories are also tasked to uh, scale down and scale up those on activities. This means by scaling down, I mean involve laboratories in the Glossland activities and reporting what you learn during AFILAB and Glossland meetings to the national level. Scaling up, I mean report the need, the challenges of your local context of the laboratories within your country that you're in contact with to the AFILAB governance and to the Glossland governance and to us Glossland coordinators. So we can have a better overview of the national necessities and adapt even the global work plan and um, global activities to the regional and national um, context. And, and all these tasks and many others are reported in the terms of reference of uh, laboratories in Glossolan that is uh, available on the Glossolan website in different languages. So please uh, consult it and have a look at it. And uh, you will see if you are national reference laboratories, please be aware of the role that you are asked to, to, to have within your national network. Um, there is a website I will show you now. Uh, we are updating it, so some information are not uh, provided for all countries. Uh, I received some communication in the last weeks. We were very busy, as Lugasha mentioned, but uh, I will work in the upcoming weeks to um, uh, update uh, some uh, country profiles that sent me some information uh, recently. But basically for each, there is this menu when you can find the uh, drop down menu. So you can just select the country and you have uh, all the information for that country. And in the Nazulon webpage, you find these two important documents you find here on the right, the terms of reference for the national networks. So what are the roles and tasks that the Nazulon should, um, should take and should implement and some guidelines that will help you to establish national network. And this is very important because we report in these guidelines also some case studies from different countries in the world uh, that face different challenges that may be similar to you, to, to, to your national context. So you may use their experience to overcome the challenge, the problems that you're facing now um, before the establishment of your network. Um, I want to briefly show you uh, the web page to show you how does it work. I hope you can see my screen. So on Glossolan web page, if you click on the left, there is this National Soil Laboratory Network web page. Um, once again, here you find these documents I just um, I just present you. And here you can select the country you prefer um, and find information of them. For instance, I will take as an example from Africa, Zimbabwe. I know they have um, established uh, already a network. So you will find a brief, some information of the history of the network, the main activities that they are implementing, even the main challenges uh, regarding the laboratories, the, some information of the National Reference Lab, so you know the name, where they're located, and some information of the other um, laboratories operating in the country. And here we have a map of Zimbabwe with the, the location of the different labs. By clicking, you can see the, who is the head of the lab, uh, where are they located, and so on. Um, so uh, I will conclude this presentation just briefly. Mm, yeah, I was here, sorry. Um, 
just mentioned that we receive many many information of national networks still we know that many countries within africa and other countries in the world as well uh, didn't establish uh, a national networks yet uh, for different reasons and different conditions they have uh, because they have low number of laboratories operating in the country and in this case they may think to organize to have to establish a network uh, between uh, neighbor countries no because may, they may have the same uh, uh language the same kind of issues and together they can um, establish a uh, a network with more than one country together if the the conditions allows it um they may have communication problems due to corona virus this was a uh, very a strong problem last year it was mentioned as a strong problem maybe maybe a lack of knowledge on how to establish the network and in this case i would say again no worry, we have some guidelines available on the website, uh, or you can ask us. We are here to help you and support you. Also, regarding communication problems, we can give you some, uh, some advice on the tools to use to overcome these challenges. And again, financial resources, we know there's a main issue. We always need them to implement activities, but some activities can be implemented without any money. For instance, the first uh, national network meeting can be organized virtually. So you don't need really a big budget to implement it. Actually, <laughs> with no budget, you can you can implement it. So um, please think about that and contact us. Have a look at the website. All the information are there, and we are here to provide you more. Uh, we have um, many countries that are actually establishing uh, national networks. Here I report some countries, but there are even more. And um, and some countries already established the the national networks. In this regard, I ask uh, the countries, uh, both both groups, to give us regular updates. Because if you organize another meeting, or if you organize some, any activities, or you need any problems, or you have different needs, please let us know so we can both update your your country profile on the website and um, give you assistance, of course, and support. So. In which, like, in, uh, I don't know in which, in which case your country may fall, if you have already uh, an established network, if you're working on establishing it, or you don't have, uh, you didn't establish it yet, but in, in each case you are, we are here to support you and to uh, improve the condition of the national networks in your country. Because again, NASOLAN are really important to implement BlueSolan activities to the national context and to um, also, Allow Glossolan to adapt its work plan to the national um, to the national um, context and needs. So I think this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, I saw there are some hands up. I don't know if was the, someone was a question. Uh, you can write in the chat. Otherwise, we can uh, move on. I don't know if there are any questions on this item. Um, Again, if you have uh, someone is written, wrote me, if you have any updates on your NASA, please write me an email with all the details, and I will update the website accordingly. As well, if you have any particular needs regarding your national networks, we are here to support you, and you can easily communicate by email or by organizing meetings. So, if uh, there is no question on this, um, I would like to move forward, and we will uh, now present. The other uh, GSP um, activities uh, under implementation in the region. And um, I will give the floor to my colleague Yushin Tong from GSP Secretariat. I will present um, a project that uh, is coordinating uh, within uh, Uganda and Rwanda for uh, laboratory procurement. So Yushin, I thank you for your participation in the, in the, in the meeting and uh, I give you the floor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, it's my I'm glad to have this opportunity to briefly introduce uh, the the implementation of the projects in Uganda, Rwanda, which will have uh, activity relevant to the global land in Africa. So let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can, please. 
Okay. Uh, I need to open it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Um, I would like to brief introduce the project which is implementing in Uganda, Rwanda. Uh, the project title is the Capacity Building on Sustainable Soil Management for Africa uh, in Uganda, Rwanda. There are two projects now implementing in Uganda, Rwanda. Uh, firstly, I would like to general introduce the background of the projects. Uh, this project uh, uh, is implementing by FAO representation in Uganda, Rwanda. A global South Partnership, JSP, provides technical support to those two projects. And the donor is from China, uh, which is uh, China International Center for Economic and Technical Exchanges from the Ministry of Commercial. A second donor is China International Development Corporation Agency. Uh, the key partner in the two countries are uh, Rwanda Agriculture and Animal Resources Development Board. And uh, uh, the key partner in Uganda is the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Industry and Fisheries. Of course, we have many local soil institutions, organizations are uh, involved in the implementation of the project. And the Chinese partner is the Institute of Agricultural Resource and Re uh, Regional Planning of uh, Chinese Academy of Agriculture Sciences. These two projects were uh, from to, to July 2020 to June 2021. Uh, I'm here because there is a, a very important activity in the projects uh, relevant to the global land. So, which is the first activity, provide equipment for efficient laboratory soil testing and efficient fertilizer testing. So, uh, we we will have we are we are implementing four stages uh, to for this activity. Firstly, we we analyze the, the list of equipment with partner of select laboratory in Uganda, Rwanda. And, one, and then we started the procurement procedure of FAO for the for those equipment, and then supply and install equipment. The, the final stage will be the training, uh, training the laboratory technicians for using the equipment. For both labor, uh, countries, we have uh, the, the the references laboratory of global land to uh, for receiving those equipment. In Uganda, it is the National semi arid Resources Research Institute, Institute, and in Rwanda, it is the Analytical Laboratory for Soil and Plant. And we are funding around 105,000 USD dollar equipment to those two projects. Uh, so uh, now we have already uh, have some equipment uh, delivered in the country. So more and more other items will coming soon to the laboratories in these two countries in these two uh, appointed laboratories. We are also working to engage with the donor to seeking more funding resources to to the laboratory to funding laboratory equipment uh, in the future. Uh, so we hope we can find more resources from this donor because they are really want to contribute uh, to this region to facilitate the soil management and through the capacity building on soil laboratories. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions we can discuss, we, uh, you can ask me later. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Philippe. Hello. Let me take the floor, Yushin. Thank you okay. so much for your intervention and the uh, and presentation of your project. Um, I invite colleagues to ask questions. If any, maybe you can answer in the chat. And uh, now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, actually, Sebastian Barrain. He will be talking about uh, uh, the soil doctors on behalf of my, Caroli of my colleague, uh, Carolina Oliveira, that is actually the responsible officer for the implementation of this program. 
but I care of introducing you all to Sebastian because uh, he is actually the GSP coordinator of the African Soil Partnership. He is based in Africa and he is very willing to support you for whatever you need also, you know, outside the Soil Doctors framework. So Sebastian, the floor is yours. You can also add to your, in, to your presentation if you like, uh, meaning that you can better tell them your role and what you are doing in, um, in the region. We cannot hear you, huh? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Right. So good morning, good afternoon to you all. As my colleague Lucrezia has said, I am Sebastian. I am part of the GSP team based in Accra, Ghana and I'm the regional facilitator for the GSP in Africa and also in charge of the African Soil Partnership. I support in projects and in programs related to soil fertility and nutrition and also topics that are connected to the voluntary guidelines on sustainable soil management. Today, my work is to presents on the soil doctor implementation. That is one of the projects that the GSP is rolling out to support the implementation of the voluntary guidelines on sustainable soil management. Now, what is all this soil doctors about? Soil doctors came about when the status of the soil resources, World Soil Resources report identified 10 threats and proposed that there was a need to take action to minimize or to halt these 10 threats. To do this, the voluntary guidelines for sustainable soil management was developed, but we know that this is voluntary. And to make this document relevant, it, was, it is necessary that the ones who take the decision, that is the farmers who make the day-to-day -day decisions in terms of investment or practices are involved. So the next question was, how do we bring the farmers on board? That is how the soil doctors program or concept came about. Now it's just a farmer to farmer training program that is all aimed at how we can translate sustainable soil management practices into actions on the ground. And we believe that the farmers are the best persons who can convince their colleague farmers as to what to do, what not to do, and to carry this message onto the ground if we really want to see any impact on the ground. So this idea of soil doctors came up and then to help us identify champion farmers who will become the ambassadors or trainers of their fellow farmers using demonstration plots after receiving training through promoters who have worked or have been trained with the GSP. So this is how it works. A call is launched and then promoters in countries who are interested in partnering the GSP to implement this program apply. We go through a screening process and then are shortlisted. Now the promoter is coming in to collaborate with FAO. So the promoter should be an entity that works with farmers and has contact of farmers and is already involved in some form of education or training. Now at this level, the promoter and then GSP try to identify what are the issues in a particular country because of soil issues, there are some that are site specific. So aside the general things that we want to promote, we also like to find out what the specific issues are. Now, after the promoter is identified at the country level, we organize training for the trainers of the promoter who now train 
some farmers who are interested in the program, then those who are successful after going through some form of evaluation, practical, and then a bit of theory, we get four to six champion farmers who now get accredited as soil doctors to undergo or to proceed with the training at the community level. So this is how the soil doctor is all about. It's about empowering farmers with information, with knowledge, and then the tools that they need to take the right decision and also convince their fellow farmers. So this is just, I mean, uh, this picture or this chart shows the responses that have been received since the call was launched from the various regions in the world. And this also shows an idea of what a funding and sustainability plan is. We are more interested in partners who are running projects and who have in place mechanisms that can continue because we are coming in to provide the training and all the other logistics supports that we can. But then we don't want the soil doctor to die down. So we want promoters who are already on the ground doing some work. That is why one of the key things is to make sure that the national extension agency or units in the country is involved because that is a government institution that has staff that will continue to work even if um, private sector or the NGOs run out of funds and cannot you know, continue. The extension services in the country would be able to continue with this training and then this support. So that is one of the things we're also looking at. Now, implementation of activities. This table is to just tell you what we have been able to do and then what is still planned to be done. For Africa, currently, we want to undertake three pilots in Ghana, in Gambia, in Nigeria. Already, the proposal from Gambia has come, which has been reviewed. And we are also trying to look at how best we collaborate because there's a need for that contribution that the promoter must also make to support the efforts of the GSP. So that is what we are doing. Now, to help us do this training, we have standard modules that the GSP has produced in terms of the posters. The posters are what we are going to use. Now, when we come to a country, in order to make the training real on the ground, after training the promoters, trainers, and then the extension agents, we move into the next phase, which is the translation of posters into a local language that the farmers can easily understand. Now, for Malawi, we can see that we have been able to do this in three local languages, which are available to be used as a training material by the farmers and other places to this kind of work is ongoing. Now, when we talk of the educational kits, this is what it's all about. Now, we want to give farmers hands-on you know, training to be able to carry out some of these analysis, physical properties, chemical properties, biological properties. Now, we, the plan is to use visual assessment as well as very simple chemicals or reagents. And where there is a need for something that is more technical, then we will fall on the AFRILAB or the NASOLANS in the countries to come on board to help us to know which reagents to use. I mean, since they are there, you can better help us. We we'll, we'll come up with proposals and then you tell us which is available and then how we make that available to the farmers. So these are some of the reagents that have been proposed. And then we are hoping that when the time comes and there's a need to provide this to countries, Afri, AfriLab will be there to support us to do this to help in our work we are also embarking on a visual identity to produce some caps t-shirt vests that will give out to the trainers and also eventually to the soil doctors now this is 
just an idea of how the charts will look like. So the information that will be collected, and then for some of the indicators that we are hoping to use visual assessment, we have poor, moderate, good. So the reads, and then based on what he's seeing, he provides, he takes that on the chart that is on the left. So you look here, if it's root quantity, you look at the soil sample, then now you come to this chart and then you take what is there. I'm sure with time, when the training rolls out, I mean, we'll all be able to get it clear. So the way forward, why we think the Riso land or Afrilab should be involved. Like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to some of the chemical analysis, where we think that um, for some of the reagents, we will need to use certain chemicals, then we will need to fall on the National Reference Laboratory to also provide some guidance and also to help us in procuring these reagents and then supplying them to the trainers or to the farmers. So we will need you to help us when that time comes. And also, we are also trying to look at how to develop a program that will help soil laboratories simplify laboratory techniques or procedures in um, preferably a local language. Let's say the farmer or people are encouraged to assess soil laboratory analysis. Now, the mode of communication is it going to be in English or French. How is it translated into a local language that the farmer can easily read, make meaning out of it, and even share? So we also want to look at the interpretation of soil analysis, how we can partner the national reference laboratories to give them some training to look at common laboratory results and then how it can be translated into local languages that is beneficial to the farmers. And then finally, we also want to look at crop requirements and then deficiency symptoms, how the laboratories who have worked and then probably have some field experience can also share with us the knowledge. And then we try to mar marry this with what the farmers know and then what the extension agents also provide. So basically, this is what the soil doctor is all about, farmer to farmer training program. But in as much as there is some form of chemical analysis, we want the laboratories to be that backbone to support us when the time comes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sebastian. Uh, I think I will go next because I think that Yusuf has some connection problem. So we anticipate, um, well, we skip the part on the maps and uh, we address it uh, later. <laughs> uh, and now we go for uh, the items on actually financial resource mobilizations. And uh, in this case, I also ask you, Sebastian, to please uh, uh, stay with me because I would like to ask for your support as a coordinator for uh, the region because you will have a role on this. So let oh. me share my screen. We, I will go quickly through it, but I think it's important uh, because we're a bit late on the agenda. So uh, this is still part of item two and refers to uh, resource mobilizations uh, for projects on soil laboratories at the country and regional level. So some background information. So Glossolan is a self-financed initiative, okay? So we receive no funds from FAO. Uh, the funds that the Glossolan use are the one coming from the Global Soil Partnership that is not a donor. So the Global Soil Partnership write project proposals get the funds and then implement the Glossolan activities, okay, at different levels. Now, because the GSP mostly writes projects at the global or regional level, but mostly at the global level, most of uh, the activities implemented by Glossolan are global, okay? So we have very few projects at present on soil laboratory in specific regions. 
uh, for example, the Near East and North Africa, and at the country level, for example, Liberia, Rwanda, and Uganda. So Glossalan members are kindly invited to make an effort to mobilize financial resources for the implementation of national and regional activities. But you would not be left alone on this. We can help you, but still, you should make an effort <laughs> to help yourself with our support. Um, so approaching FAO as a donor, this presentation is really about getting uh, FAO funds that are available in your country or region. So uh, approaching FAO as a donor does not mean to submit concept notes and requests for financial support to the Global Soil Partnership through Glossron, for example, okay? Because as I just told you, the GSP is not a donor. However, the GSP and Glossron can support you in approaching FAO as a donor, and especially approaching the technical cooperation program of FAO. We already did it for some countries and some regions, and here I reported the two examples of uh, successful submissions of TCP projects. One is uh, for the Near East and North Africa. That's the regional pro uh, project we currently have. And uh, looking at uh, uh, laboratories, we got $400,000 to spend on, well, mostly uh, soil laboratories and mapping activities, but indeed like soil laboratories. We will be training 12 laboratories in the region, one per each country. Then uh, looking at the national TCP in Liberia, uh, also in this case, we got $440,000 to implement activities again on soil laboratories and mapping because these activities usually go hand by hand. And in this case, we will train uh, laboratory, uh, laboratory technicians and managers and provide equipment to soil laboratories, to two soil laboratories in this country that are uh, most of the laboratories in the country. And then in a second phase, we will establish new laboratories. So as you can see, this is, uh, these are real money. These are real funds so we can get, or actually you can get uh, uh, to promote the activities in your country or region, depending on how you would like to move. But uh, how to apply for a TCP project? So first of all, you need to have uh, a clear idea on what you want in terms of activities and impact, no? the final objective of the project. And uh, if you like, uh, we can organize a meeting a uh, one-to-one -one meeting to, to discuss no? uh, what can be done in your country. Then once that you have a clear idea of the final objective and activities, you need to liaise with your government because uh, uh, the, usually it's the Ministry of Agriculture in your country that has to send an official letter with their request for a TCP project to your country office, country uh, FAO country office, in the case of national TCPs, which means uh, projects uh, like the one in Liberia, no? that involves only your country. Or the letter should be submitted to the FAO regional office if uh, we are aiming to have a regional project. The project that they interest more than one country in the region. In the letter, you should mention the problem or the challenge faced by your country, and then make the request for a TCP project with a note on how the TCP, so this project, will help to tackle the problem you, you mentioned before in your letter. And it would be very much appreciated if copy of, uh, <coughs> sorry, if copy of the letter 
or of uh, the email you send to the FAO country or regional office can be sent also uh, to the Glossolan coordinator. So in this case, uh, me, and in the case of Africa, also to Sebastian, so that we can follow up uh, as needed. Then once that the request is submitted and eventually welcome, uh, it's time to prepare the project document. This is not something you can do by your own because you have to use a, a specific template, FAO template. So you really need to work uh, with uh, an FAO um, officer. Um, well, it can be uh, usually I support as a Glossolan coordinator, um, the TCP officer in uh, uh, the FAO office, you submitted the letter is usually also involved and Sebastian as regional coordinator of the African Soil Partnership uh, uh, can also support. So by working all together, we can uh, get to have these project documents uh, prepared and then submitted to the competent office. And eventually, well, we have to wait for approval and ev eventually we start its implementation. But this is the procedure. I think that the most important thing for you to do is well to formulate your request to have an idea of what you want and then get the letter from the ministry submitted to the FAO, FAO office. This is the most eventually complicated part of the process. Um, some notes. So TCP projects is not something you can apply anytime. There are deadlines. Deadlines in terms of submitting the request. So first the letter and then uh, the project proposal, and then in terms of uh, allocation of money. So these projects are alloc assigned every two years. So at the end of a biennial. Uh, the projects provide a maximum of $500,000, no more and uh, should be implemented on average in one, one and a half year time. And uh, they can be used to kick off activities, assess needs, and write a second phase project proposals to get additional uh, funds. I believe that this is my last uh, uh, slide. I would like to ask Sebastian to add to, to my presentation if I missed anything and to you all to ask questions because uh, uh, my, my hope is that you would really start thinking about this funding opportunity and actually uh, take action. Uh, within your government and then within your country or regional FAO office, because now we are getting to the end of the biennium, so it's a good time to ask for funds. That's why I cared of presenting you uh, this slide. Sebastian, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I think, yeah, you've said it all. All, all I would like to add is that there's something called Country Programming Framework, CPF. So FU has what we call the country programming framework. That is what it uses as a document, like a form of agreement between FAO and the national government. So I would like to entreat them that they should approach the country office, speak to the assistant FAO, and then tell them that you want to know the CPF. Now, the CPF will tell you what the government's priority areas are. And then you look at it, if there's something agriculture, something environment, something, let's say, soil or something practices, then you now look at, that will guide you as to how to now um, tweak the project idea, how you can formulate it so that we can say, okay, since they want to promote good agricultural practices, we want to say, okay, it's important that, I mean, um, good soil sampling, this, 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 that. So that will guide now how the project will be, idea will be formulated and then it's presented to the country of it. So it's important that you have connection at the Ministry of Agriculture because that is the first ministry FAO engages with, Ministry of Agriculture 
country office and then once you get these two people you already have an idea as to how to go and then we will come in so like she said keep us in, involved so that we can guide you we can be part of the process and then together we get it the biennium is ended this is the time for the project proposals to be submitted because countries receive their allocation now so it's important that the ideas and everything starts now so that once the approval comes in it's a process we can i mean finally start the implementation that's the little that i want to add Thank you very much, Sebastian. Indeed, that's very important. Uh, is there any question from the floor? Mustafa, would you like to say something? Actually, uh, we, we indicate you as moderator of the discussion. If you like, also in French. Yes, thank you, Lucrecia. Um, bonjour, l'assistance. Yes, I would like to say something. As I noticed, there are people that do not understand really what's happening as the communications are in English. Uh, yeah, they, they, they should Speaking do some... Speaking French. Speaking okay. French. No problem. Okay. Okay. Donc, là, je, je, je me présente à, aux, aux participants. Je n'ai pas présenté avec la connexion qui m'était difficile. Voilà, je suis le, le, le vastier en, en français du, des pays francophones. Pour ceux qui nous suivent, qui ne sont pas à mesure de, de, de comprendre les, les procédures, en fait, j'aimerais dire qu'il y, y a des facilités qui, sont, qui ont été présentées par le, le, représentant, le représentant de GSP en Afrique, Sébastien, qui vient de, de, de définir sa communication. Il nous a passé une, une information très importante. Et là, j'ai constaté que Filippo nous a fait savoir que nous aurons ça disponible sur le site de, 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 de AfriLab à la fin de, de la présentation, à la fin de la réunion, ce qui me rassure. Auparavant, j'étais un peu inquiet du fait que c'est pas tout le monde. Nos francophones ne seront pas à mesure de comprendre ce qui se passe. Mais là, il vient de me rassurer en passant un lien qui est là. Juste, euh, euh, il, il nous a passé euh, le lien. Après le, le, le meeting, bien sûr, les gens peuvent se connecter et pouvoir tirer les informations nécessaires. Voilà. Je pense que s'il y a des questions, les gens peuvent la poser maintenant pour pouvoir s'informer davantage sur ce qui se passe. Parce que euh, Philippe l'a bien mentionné au début de cette communication, dire que l'Afrique est en train de grandir, d'atteindre un certain seuil. Donc, les objectifs sont franchement en train d'être atteints à, au, au regard du nombre des de, de laboratoires qui sont en train de, de se connecter, d'être avec nous. Même que l'objectif principal, c'est l'harmonisation de, de nos analyses. Voilà. Maintenant, si les gens adhèrent en grand nombre, c'est parce que c'est important et c'est l'un de nos objectifs aussi. Si les gens sont ici, veuillez s'il vous plaît poser des questions. C'est une plage, nous avons combien de minutes selon le calendrier qu'on nous a offert. Voilà, donc je, je, je finirai en, dirant aux gens, en, en disant aux gens de, de, de poser des questions. Tout ce qui leur semble flou par rapport à l'activité de, de AfriLab, de Glossoland, tout, c'est une occasion. Voilà, c'est l'occasion de s'informer, de connaître davantage ce qu'il y a lieu de faire pour aller de l'avant dans son labo, dans son pays et à l'échelle internationale, bien sûr. Euh, merci. Lucrezia, I thank you so much. I think I, I, have, I have informed well my people, the Francophone um, followers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mustafa. So if there are any questions from Francophone speaking countries, um, we welcome them. Okay, if not, uh, uh, well, you can send us uh, an email. We can still reply by email so you have time to think about it. And um, um, okay, and we move to the next uh, item in the agenda.
that would be let me have a look afrilab main needs um i pass again the floor to my colleague uh, christian yes merci lucrecia um it's i'm not sure there is a translation from french to english uh yes there is so you can even speak in french if you want okay no in uh, in fact i will leave michael start the presentation this is what we just decided and after this i can answer questions that will be in french but so i will let michael present some initiative that we would like to launch Okay. Okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. Um, Felipe, I thought you were going through your survey first. Yeah, yeah. Let me present the survey results first. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, I would briefly um, report to you what are the survey of the um, the results of the survey that we launched to open the discussion of the Africa main needs. So um, as you may. Yes. Well, can I just ask you to speak a little bit more slowly? Yeah, yeah sure. Because Sorry. as you have many results to present, I think the translation will be difficult if you speak too fast. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, Sorry. thanks. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, um, as you may know, we launched a survey uh, that we share with you uh, last month. Uh, that we closed the submission uh, a couple of days ago. This survey was on Afrilab main needs, and um, it was very important for us to acquire and get some results to have a clear overview of what are the main needs of the regional networks. Um, I'm very happy uh, that we received some answers, and I, and I would like to thank again uh, those of you who answered the survey. Mm, 22 um, answers has been collected from this country that are listed here. Um, and the survey was available in English, French, and Portuguese, because we would like to reach the um, all apps in the region. Um, so I would like to, uh, to briefly go through the answers. I organized them into main topics. So I will start from the regional context. So let's find out who answered the survey. Um, the top of laboratory, this was just an overview that answered the survey were mainly public laboratories and from government. Um, no one from the private sector answered, um, some also from university. We tried also to find out if laboratories in the, in the region uh, are aware uh, on the activities implemented within AFRILAB. Uh, many of them said yes. Um, the majority of them said yes. They are informed by uh, Glossolan coordinators or even by the um, resolute chair and vice chair or even by the national reference uh, laboratory in the country. So uh, this, uh, how is this like an overview on how communication works within the region? So most of the lab rely on the direct communication from the, the, governance, the governance of Glossoland and the, from me and Lucrezia, Noc and Rob that send to you um, direct email and communication on the activities implemented in the network. Uh, we were also wondering um, if uh, there is a strong connection uh, between the and communication between the governance of the region and the laboratories operating in the region. So if labs receive communication from the regional chair and vice chairs. So most of them said yo, said no. So this means that um, we should find a way to improve the communication between the chair and vice chair of uh, AFRILAB and the labs within the network. Uh, we will discuss this uh, later on during the governance uh, discussion uh, because indeed we would like to give more importance, more uh, coordination 
to the governance of the of the region to the chair and vice chairs um, in order to uh, strength and boost the the communication between them and the labs and especially between the go the res the afrilab chair and vice chair and the national reference laboratories uh, of the countries mm, we also investigate if labs join the afrilab meeting they say uh, yes most of most of them joined it uh, some didn't so hopefully they are here today to start the also because some of some of those who answered the survey didn't uh, were just registered in Glossolan in the last year, so didn't have the chance to follow any Afrilab meeting in the last year. But hopefully they are here today, so they can start following the activities. And those who attend uh, Afrilab meetings in the last years uh, say stated that the experience was really useful. So um, we're really happy about that. And we were wondering why they think it's useful. So this also uh, is, is a kind of, is a way to understand why it's important to have this uh, regular meeting with uh, Afilab, Glossland, and even within the national networks. Of course, people think that this is a good way to implement Glossolan activities in the region, so downscale Glossolan activities within Africa. Um, they think it's a good way to, of course, to discuss among laboratories operating within the same region and have a nice overview and uh, um, sort out what are the main needs of the region and prioritize even the activities to implement within AfriLab. Uh, and of course, it's a powerful tool to inform laboratories about global activities and um, not just acquire information, but also to give information and knowledge. And also uh, for trainings, as you know, last year we organized some trainings during the AFRILAB meeting, while this year we kind of uh, divided the session. So this session, as Lucrezia mentioned, is just about decision making and discussion while uh, different training sessions are being organized and implemented throughout uh, the year. Starting from now, in the coming months, we will have several training sessions in different languages. So as Lucrezia mentioned, if you have a look at our website, you can uh, be updated on them. And of course, very important, unity makes strength. Many of you um, highlight this point is important to make connections, to make networks within laboratories operating in Africa and in other regions of the world, of course, because if we share our knowledge, if we discuss about the common challenges, we may found easier a way to overcome these issues. We were wondering also, we inquire if uh, laboratories join any proficiency test, APT, or called also interlaboratory comparison, ring test, I call different ways to call it. So basically APT in the, in the last years. Um, unfortunately, not many uh, additions to join it. This is why also Glossolan is important because we, because we are trying to organize PT for free uh, with our members. And this is why it's also important to think start thinking to organize and implement a PT within the region. And we will discuss this very soon with Christian and Michael. It is very important to organize regional and especially national PTs because we then we can allow to have a wider participation, more, particip more participants from the region and from the countries of Africa uh, within a PT that will target certain parameters of uh, very important for the region, for the soil types in the region. Mm, because in this case, in this graph, the 32% the of, um, of labs that submit the survey just join a PT organized by Glossolan. Uh, and of course it's a low percentage, but, and we would like more of you to join a PT because it's a powerful tool to, um, to, con to control the quality of your analysis. But again, 
we will discuss this very soon with Michael and Christian. Uh, this is a very important uh, slide because it summarizes what are the main needs of the region. Among all uh, the most uh, request uh, topic, I mean, the main needs, uh, the main need has been identified as the training for laboratory staff members. Many people state that they need continuous training on different topics. And um, this is why Glossola now is working on uh, implementing different trainings on different topics. Uh, again, have a look at the website. You will see there are trainings on spectroscopy, health and safety, um, equipment, uh, standard operating procedures, the SOPs. So you can really um, implement, uh, we will implement this training in different languages and you can follow the training for free. You can find the presentation online. You can um, easily follow it online. Uh, the training will be all implemented via Zoom. And there is a powerful tool to uh, improve your analytical capacity, let's say. Uh, some other main needs. Uh, is also the adoption of more sustainable or even more modern techniques uh, and procedures for soil analysis. This is why GlowSolan is trying to highlight for each SOPs uh, what, are the, what are the more sustainable in terms of taking into account the risk for human health and the risk of the, for the environment, especially related to the disposal of the reagents, because we know some of the reagents used in the SOPs are very, um, uh, let's say, difficult to, to dispose. So we would like to promote and encourage the transition towards more sustainable methodologies. This is why we also um, collect this information and we kind of compare different, different procedures to measure the same soil parameter on our website. So you can uh, compare the different procedures and assess which are more sustainable and which are less sustainable. Of course, harmonization of SOPs has been identified as one of the main needs and uh, health and safety as well. Um, all these topics are, target, are targeted by the Glossolan trainings that are going to be implemented very soon. Uh, also about accreditation, uh, we, we will organize a training session on, on that. Uh, quality control, we are launching now a PT, we will discuss about implementing a PT um, uh, from, on the regional scale. So all this, we are trying to cover all these items, but we, again, thank you for submitting this because it can allow us uh, to have an overview of what are your main needs and even in which degree of uh, importance. So we know that training is the main need for this region and we will try to um, organize more training session especially in French, English, and even Portuguese, in order to uh, allow you to follow it better and to reach uh, the largest number of laboratories possible. Uh, some other inputs that we collect uh, regarding the main needs of the region. Uh, some would like to harmonize SOPs that are uh, more um, relevant for the parameters that you mostly analyze that may not be the global ones. So there are some SOP, some procedures that are adopted in the region that have not yet harmonized by Glossolan. And uh, we will discuss about this later on when we will discuss about which SOPs Glossolan should harmonize. And please provide your inputs in this regard. Um, another input was about the organization of uh, interlab uh, stage opportunities. This, of course, with COVID may be challenging, but we will try to uh, think about this when the situation will be uh, better. And um, also funding was a main issue, of course, because to implement PTs, to get some instruments and training, sometimes you need, of course, uh, lots of money. And again, try to contact us and we will work with you to support you uh, for project proposals to get some financial resources. Um, and other, other needs regard, of course, the communication, as already mentioned, so we want to strengthen, we should strengthen the communication between the governance of the AFRILAB and the laboratories. 
Um, and someone, someone also asked for more research product, projects among laboratories. Regarding the trainings that should be implemented in the region, we also were wondering what are the main topics of these trainings in order to uh, provide you the knowledge that you most need. Um, most of you answer um, like that the main focus should be on uh, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures. Um, laboratory management was identified as one of the main um, topic for trainings, but as you can see, uh, most of most topics uh, were be identified as uh, highly um, asked by laboratories. So we'll try to to meet all your requests and implement trainings. We're actually organizing already trainings on all these topics, and we will try to implement them uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we're trying to also, uh, the last part of the survey was about the awareness and from the national and the regional governments on the role played by soil laboratories, no? Of course, Closolan would like to raise the um, awareness of the local governments on the role uh, that soil laboratory have in providing good soil data. In this regard, we were wondering if you think that your uh, government is aware of the, um, the role played by soil laboratories. Uh, some of you said yes, some say no, but the main output here was that uh, we should work on, um, Glossal should work on some material to inform them better, no? Uh, to inform about the, the, the local government about the role and the importance to invest in soil laboratories. We also already start working with that. We made some posters, but uh, we may go further by translating the posters into local language or, or uh, work on more material to in order to uh, be provided to, to, to send, to, to give to the local governments to inform them on the role that you play. And also we would like to know if uh, the government provides some, some kind of support to laboratories. And we found out that the, um, some of the governments supports uh, laboratories from the economic point of view by indeed providing financial resources. Uh, also some technical supports uh, in regard of equipment and reagents consumables. Um, some of you still didn't have any contact with the government making uh, the um, supports from the economic and uh, technical point of view rather challenging. So we will try to indeed prepare some, some material and to, to, to inform the governments on the role. And so in order to allow laboratories to have contact with the government and eventually uh, ultimately also have some how uh, be somehow supported by uh, the governments. And we also ask if uh, you, think, you think that uh, AFRILAB should work, AFRILAB and Glossolan should um, play an active role in uh, facilitating this communication between laboratories and the governments. Uh, for instance, by preparing um, policy briefs on highlighting the role of soil laboratories and all respondents said yes. So this output together with the, um, we launched this survey also in the other region. So we will um, bring these results, this clear statement to the Glossolan meeting. And we'll try to discuss about this possibility there in, uh, in November when the annual Glossolan meeting will take place. We will try to discuss on the, uh, this item and eventually um, start working on policy briefs and other informative material on the role played by laboratories um, in order to highlight their role to the government. So this was my last slide uh, to present you the survey results. Uh, now I will give the floor to um, Christian and Michael to start discussing these results 
that I show you and um, propose some other um, activities for the network, uh, especially regarding the organization of a proficiency test within the African region. Uh, so I don't know if Michael or, or Christian, who, who of you wants to start? Finalement, c'est moi qui vais commencer. Je pense que ça donnera l'occasion à Suge qui fait la traduction. Merci Suge de se reposer un peu aussi. Et peut-être ce sera plus facile pour les pays francophones de poser des questions. Comme Philippe vient de le présenter, en fait, dans l'enquête qui a été faite, on a vu que deux laboratoires sur trois seulement ont participé à la comparaison interlaboratoire aux, aux tests de compétences, ce qu'on appelle en anglais « proficiency test ». C'est un test de compétences, une comparaison interlaboratoire alors que c'est devrait être une activité absolument indispensable. Vous avez vu que le Glossolan essaye de vous fournir beaucoup de documents pour aider les gens à s'organiser, à travailler de manière standardisée, parce que l'objectif final est bien de prendre un échantillon de sol, de pouvoir l'envoyer dans n'importe quel laboratoire à travers le monde et d'être sûr qu'on obtient des résultats de bonne qualité et des résultats comparables. Donc, pour ça, ce qui a été appelé les SOP, les procédures standards d'analyse, permettent déjà aux gens de se dire, bon, on va travailler tous de la même manière. Souvent, les gens utilisent les mêmes procédures, les mêmes, pardon, euh, les, les mêmes euh, euh, analyses, euh, les, euh, comment dire, les mesures les, suivant les mêmes caractéristiques, mais les mêmes méthodes, voilà, c'est le mot que je cherchais. Les gens utilisent les mêmes méthodes, mais avec des procédures différentes. Par Sorry, exemple, yeah. we have an issue with interpretation. So while we resolving it, can you please uh, speak in English for a second while we solve the interpretation issue? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So what I just explained in French is uh, Filippo presented that uh, only two two on three labs participated to proficiency tests, interlaboratory comparison. That should be the main of a, a very important part of your activity because uh, the objective of a glossolan is so that we can use one soil sample and send it to any lab in the world. And you must be sure to get good quality results and comparable result. So, most of us are using, so the first step is to have SOPs, standard operating procedures. In this case, this means that you are all using the same procedure, not only the same method, but also the same procedure. For example, for pH, we are all making a suspension of uh, soil and water, but the amount of water can be different. So having a standard operating procedure, we already use the same way, the same ratio, soil water ratio, for example. So this is the first step. And there are many other documents that helps you to, to do the things in a standard way. But now, how can you know you really get the result you should get? This is, as I told you, take one sample, set the same sample, send it to all the labs in the world, and see if the results are comparable. And this is in fact what you will do in some weeks about using the samples that uh, Lucrecia, I think, presented at the beginning and where you have to analyze carbon, phosphorus, and total nitrogen. This will be a global uh, proficiency test uh, in laboratory comparison for all the labs in the world. But we have seen last year that there was a very big motivation to organize an African interlaboratory comparison. Unfortunately, this year, it was very difficult to organize it for Glossolan and for the AfriLab to help you organizing it. So with IID and the British Geological Survey, IID is a French research institute and the British Geological Survey and 
uh, with the support with Glossolan, we have collected some African soils and we will organize an African interlaboratory comparisons. After the first one, you will first receive the samples that have been mentioned by Lucretia, and we are preparing now some samples that uh, Michael will explain you how to present it, to prepare it. Because the objective, we have prepared this sample this year in 2021 to make one step forward because there was a high motivation and we have seen labs able to prepare sample in this way to prepare it for an African network. But so we have started to do it this year to go forward. And there are two important things I think you must keep in mind. First, all this step is totally confidential. Only a very limited number of people will be able to make the link between the confidential ID you have and your laboratory. This few people is Lucrecia, Filippo, and Nopmani, that is the chairperson of Glossolan. Even if I'm making some statistical analysis, I cannot make the link between an ID and a lab. I don't know which lab is behind it. So you must remember this is confidential and never give any information about your confidential IT. The second thing is this is to help you to evaluate your performances. Because you have been explained how to do, but how can you do that you are doing the things correctly? You see, just to take an example about football, you can be explained how to play correctly football, but how can you know you play correctly before making a match, playing with other people. This is the same. You do your best in the lab, and now you have a, a sample that helps you to evaluate it. And usually these samples are very expensive. And in this case, it is free. And the objective is not just like an accreditation body to say you do it correctly, you don't do it correctly. No, it's to help you evaluate your performance and know where you need help. And if you are a highly good performing lab, you know how you can help the others. Filippo mentioned about trainings. You see, nowadays it's difficult to travel around the world, so it's difficult to organize really uh, movement of a long distance of uh, people going from one country to the other. But if you are in the same continent, it's much more easier. So this is why we will do it, uh, organize it at the African scale and send some samples this year. But we, Glossona would like to have some volunteer laboratory able and interested to prepare the samples that can be prepared in Africa and sent to the other African countries. We don't need motivated labs, but also how performing labs. When Mr. Sangare has left his microphone open, it seems. Yes, thank you very much. And so we need motivated laboratories and skilled laboratories to do it. I think from the meeting last year, there are such laboratories in Africa. But just to show you what the process is of the samples you will receive in some weeks or months, and what some laboratory will have to do, Michael will now show you some slides on how the samples were prepared by the British Geological Survey. So Michael, I'll let you the floor now. Okay, thank you. Can I just reiterate your message? Um, please do the proficiency testing tasks. They are extremely valuable to your laboratories. It is not a test to fail. It is something to help you improve. Um, they are very expensive to, to do. If you were to pay for them, it could be several hundreds of dollars. So this is a valuable resource that is coming to you through a proficiency testing scheme. So it, like Christian said, it could identify how to target training and other resources and to link collaborators together. When we had the AFRI lab um, meeting in Nairobi in 2019, we visited the, the Calro labs 
and I, I, I certainly think that would be a laboratory that could make reference materials if we were to try and move this activity to be hosted within Africa. That would be the ultimate aim and a very positive approach if we could run more of this kind of activity from within Africa. Um, so I can show you quickly how we do this. You don't need to do this in the same way, but the principles are the same. You may have different equipment. Ultimately, you need to select a material for your proficiency testing scheme and decide what you want to test. So which, which methods to test, and that will decide on the types of soil you will select. So whether they have a range of pHs or carbon content, for example, and then you need to decide on the size fraction. So we had a lot of discussions about this over many months, actually, in deciding which methods and carbon um, was the preferred method, partly because of COP26 um, and the focus on carbon and the need for good quality data uh, and to understand uh, if, if that exists in laboratories around the world. So that's why we, we started with the global um, PT scheme. And these photographs show you how we prepared the soils for the global PT um, exercise. Okay, so we start with, uh, so I'll just show you some photos, photographs here with the material. Ultimately, we aimed for a less than 250 micron material. Now, some of you may analyze um, carbon at different size fractions, for example, but we took this um, as the most homogeneous sample material we could provide you for carbon, for nitrogen and phosphorus. We're also using this in the African PT scheme for pH. Now, many of you will use two, less than two millimeter, but what we're trying to measure is the uncertainty between laboratory measurements, not the uncertainty within the soil. So we have homogenized the sample to less than 250 to reduce the uncertainty in that material. Okay, so we, you can see here, nice soil sample. And of course you have to have a method of mixing it. So this is just an example of a barrel with some um, paddles inside it to help mix it. So you must ensure that it is homogenized. I've seen, seen a number of laboratories across Africa where this is done with a hand turning rotary barrel. Um, very easy to make and very cheap. So that you get a nice homogenous material. Okay. Oops. Let me just, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Okay, and then we will, you need to subsample. So you go through a process of subsampling your main material. So you need to think how many PT samples do you need at the end, and then work back to what your original material is, and then subdivide, okay, all the way down. Now, you will then need to split. So if you start with 10 kilos, for example, you might have 10 one kilo packets. And then you split those one kilo packets down into your final weight. So for example, this was 10 grams. So we have a machine here. You can see just in the background here, this is a rotary divider. So you pour the material in the top into a conveyor belt, and then it all these bottles spin around and it will um distribute 10 grams so you can set the amount of material that will go into each jar and then it is checked and then so you can see the material that you end up with in these jars and then it will be bagged and of course these are these are checked very quickly so for this global scheme we had 10 grams in this sealed bag uh rolf maybe uh, no. i take sure also raise your hand you want to take the floor Take sure. Right. Uh, if it's all right with you, I could uh, volunteer on the loss on ignition. Also, there is somebody on the loss on ignition. I could contribute to that. 
Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dexter. Actually, Ali Kamara, would it be fine also to work on loss of ignition eventually? Because you mentioned of issues of calibration. So that's why I signed you in. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Yes, agreed. So shall we consider these as all the proposals from Africa? We don't need to propose tons of them, eh? <laughs> like lots of them. A few, it's okay. Are you happy with these uh, proposals? I think it's uh, okay. There's another proposal, Washington. Yeah. Yeah, Bonnie, Joseph, you have a partner. <laughs> Very well. Anyone else willing to contribute? Maybe also from French speaking countries? Yes, I saw one doctor, uh, something from Senegal, wishing to work with Bonnie. Check in the chat. There is one, one doctor, something. So, Rolf, Rolf for exchangeable activity here. Wait, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think we have enough. All fine with this. Shall we move forward? Sorry, we are running minutes late mm. in case we will share all of this with you by email uh, and also it will be in the report so you can um, add the add to this anytime so this is just a proposal if uh, Glossolan will agree on work working on this as of this then we will initiate the working group okay so we will okay. do follow up on this email Lucrecia if okay. if you don't mind there is one aspect with biological parameters like, like the quantity of, um, I don't know, estimating the quantity of um, microbial activity in a soil. Mm -hmm. It's very important for us. If there is any possibility to put something like that with biological parameters, I don't know whether we have enough people working on it. The amount of? Microbial, um, my microbial population, yeah. Micro, microbial. In the soil. Okay, I, I put it as a request. Mm. Okay. Any other request? Things that you would like Glossolam to work on? Biomass. Microbial biomass or population? They're asking uh, Mustafa what you want. Because population is better for me. Population because we we segregate the the microbial the uh, the organisms in the soil, we say, you get them type of population, then we estimate them, we analyze the kind of like, um, I don't know how to, how to put it, the benefit they give to the soil. So it depends on the population in, the, in that amount of soil, we can, we can now understand which kind benefit they give to the soil. I'm, okay. I'm very comfortable with the population. Thank you. So it's not about, about the amount, it's about the type of population, right? So it's not biomass, it's uh, really population, the species. Okay. Um, um, Michael is proposing, Michael uh, Madumba, 
an alternative way to Sheldahl distillation for total N. Uh, nitrogen is by colorimetric method. I think that's also already harmonized. Yeah, it's done. It's done. It's done? Okay. Yeah. So let's move forward. I think <laughs> I think now we can move to the next item, Lucretia. Yes, very quickly, let me go. This is just to remind you that uh, all laboratories sending information uh, on the procedures they use in the laboratories and all authors are acknowledged in the SOP document. And uh, uh, again, this is just to show you where and how. So in the acknowledge, in the acknowledgements, uh, there are a reference to who contributed to the SOPs, and then we have specific appendix with the list of authors and the list of contributing authors, uh, laboratories, sorry. As mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, we encountered some issues in harmonizing the Glossolan SOPs this year because some, new, some methods are used by very few laboratories that completed the harmonization matrices. So, in this case, my question is like, can we still talk about globally harmonized SOPs and uh, shall we review our way to harmonize this type of uh, SOPs? Because the information are very limited. That's my only concern. So I don't know if we want to explore other ways to produce this document. And uh, again, the work for some SOPs, especially the one on uh, biological parameters, count on the support of a very few experts. So this slowed down the whole harmonization process. We had this problem for the SOPs on biological parameters, but also for example, for the one on uh, um, particulate uh, carbon and uh, boron. So how to overcome this issue is not a problem of willingness to help, but really a problem of availability of experts. And uh, this is a problem we will also likely encounter if we move towards more sustainable um, methods. I don't know if you have any idea on this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know how to overcome this issue. I don't know if you want to discuss it or I'm just leaving it there. I, let me just... <laughs> Uh, I think we can continue with uh, the harmonization matrices that we are using for now, even if the method is not so popular, at least it helps to capture some of the key aspects of the uh, methodologies. Uh, I think we can, we can still use the, the matrices we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was also my thinking. Maybe we keep it like this and then... Uh, we just updated every once in a while the SOP. Mm -hmm. I think for inputs from, lab, from labs that start implementing the method. And for the working groups uh, on some SOPs, uh, actually we were thinking because we we'll, we'll likely do it for the SOPs on biological parameters to ask uh, um, very top experts uh, on uh, uh, these parameters and uh, biological analysis, for example, to do the to write the document, the whole document, and then uh, the experts that are willing to contribute can do the review and uh, provide some inputs. But we are we're thinking to, in this case, do not establish a working group, give the work directly to some top experts. I don't know what you think. It's a bit less participative, but it would be more effective and efficient. Because really, in some cases, we have like working group of two, three people. Mm. Uh, Again, with the microbial, uh, with the microbiological parameters or biological parameters, you will agree that uh, far fewer labs also are involved in those uh, activities. So we can understand. I, I agree with you, Lucrecia, that we can just take a uh, globally recognized or some one or two globally recognized experts to help us to put that in, in shape. Otherwise, we'll, uh, 
will have we will not be able to gain much much traction or speed. So shall we agree on the following? So the proposal would be here to keep the matrices. Yeah. 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 To retrieve uh, as possible. And uh, here to assign the work to top experts on the topic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Also, we should consider what um, Glossland is saying here about reference labs encouraging uh, labs that test for biological because some of the labs that do the biological test, they are not in the, in the group. So the, lab, the reference labs, they should uh, contact those labs and encourage them to join and participate in the, in the group. Mm -hmm. Indeed, actually, um, this also links to something we will discuss in a, in a few minutes. We would like to strengthen the position of uh, the regional chairs and vice chairs and uh, also ask uh, the national reference laboratories and in general, all Glossolan members to involve more laboratories because now we are starting to work on uh, uh, new parameters, let's say new, new areas of parameters like pollutants, like uh, uh, biological parameters. And these usually are analyzed in specific laboratories. So we need to, um, to invite these laboratories to join the network. Um, so I'm sorry that we are running. Uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Yes. Okay, well, I, I put it here and then we fix it. Okay, uh, next uh, recap on the training request by AfriLab. So, Filippo, help me on this. Uh, um, you said that AfriLab required the uh, uh, trainings on the implementation of the standard operating procedures, laboratory procedures in general, and what else? Uh, laboratory management as well. Mm -hmm. um, equipment, you already mentioned. Uh, internal quality control. These are the top four topics, let's say. And then we have, of course, other topics such as external quality control and health and safety. But uh, see if you have any any other topics on any other suggestions on uh, training topics you would like uh, Glossolan to organize uh, within the African region. Please, you can right now make any proposals uh, so we can try to find uh, some trainers to implement some training session on the topic that you prefer and you most need, uh, both in English or in French. Maybe so even more precise request. Like, yeah, maybe uh, yeah, which parameters you want to have the beauty train on and so on. On the use of charts or uh, you see method validation. Filippo, um, the equipment. Is it equipment um, handling or what? Uh, this was equipment um, uh, user maintenance. Uh-huh. So that just so that it is clear from the beginning. If you tell us like also the brand or the type of equipment, we can contact the manufacturer and try to organize a webinar on this. Uh, again, with equipment maintenance, uh, I think it will be more, it may be better with the generalized one than more specific one, uh, because usually you have a variety of equipment from place to place. Yeah, but general exactly. Place, Yes, some general yeah, so equipment use common, common equipment. Yeah, maybe yes. 
blame photo this day then the special ones to can have their session so, yes okay Yeah, look, we have um, one, um, yeah, uncertainty, okay, that one. And then Rolf, uh, take sure you raise your hand, please. Take the floor. Thank you. I just wanted to check on the, on to add on to the training request. I think soil preparation uh, is a topic yeah, okay. that should be covered well. So soil preparation, because normally it is underestimated. And yet that's the key actually, everything is dependent on the soil preparation. And so because I was working actually because my laboratory assistant is out at the moment, I don't have replacement and that critical soils to be done over the weekend. And now doing them with somebody who was assisting the soil, I, I found so many areas of uncertainty that we take for granted. So I think so that should be Stand on its own, yeah. Thank you. I'm just wondering uh, if actually uh, method validation, measurement on certainty do not all come under internal quality control. Yes, indeed, we can. Yes, um, I think, yeah, all, it, it all can within be, the, yeah, all within the same topic. Under internal quality, uh, quality control. Yeah. Uh, this just we would like to have all even the subtopics let's say so we can maybe organize different session one within a big session oh. on internal quality control then we can organize a first step on validation another one on measure uncertainty another one on sample preparation for internal quality control and so on so it's good that we have a clear overview of really the even the small topics you you need so we can um we can uh, say cover all the steps, all the subtopics as well. Okay, Filippo, the health and safety is it about the is it for the personnel or the lab, is it about laboratory safety? I mean, uh, yeah, it is about health and safety. And please, I would like to take the opportunity to remind you. Now we'll put the link in the chat that uh, a training on health and safety will be held um, next week, uh, the 26th of October. Um, so please, uh, now I will put the link in the chat so you can register and follow the webinar on laboratory health and safety and risk assessment. I think there is a contribution on the soil preparation. Somebody is saying, why don't we say sample preparation? Uh, to include other material. So to no, include... take out the soil, just say sample preparation so that we include other material like water and plant. But I'm not sure that, uh, do we have the capacity to provide this training because we mostly focus on soil? Uh -huh. Yes, we do because... Uh, there's hardly any soil lab that is not doing plant analysis and water analysis. So is there any volunteer for providing this training? Joza, would you provide this training? I think <laughs> I think I can. You can. Sample, sample preparation, I think I can. Perfect. Yeah, if I can I can assist her. Wonderful. So English, the language will be English. Uh, I'm not sure we can provide training on ISO. Uh, Christian, uh, do you have an opinion on this? Are you still with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Just to me. What, hey, hey. what do you think? Can we provide trainings on ISO? Just an opinion. I'm not asking you to give it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this this is on the list also. We have discussed this with Philippe yes. Oinouk because this is accredited. All, all the things you have to do to be accredited. So this refers to accreditation. Yeah, but this is already on the list of trainings that we will organize. I can't hear. Yeah. yeah. Please, if you are not speaking, can you can you mute your mic? It's already planned. Filippo, 
Nopmani and myself mm -hmm. are already discussing and we are still deciding on which date it will be organized, but this is planned for this year. Okay, perfect. perfect. It's related can, to... Can, can yeah. I make a comment? Sorry. Uh, because the, the topic of the training topic on the internal quality control and the method of the validation and measure measurement uncertainty, this is a uh, different causes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get, did, did you hear me? I didn't yeah. If I got you, you said measurement of uncertainty is a different topic altogether. So should we take in actually of... method validation is one of the topic and measurement uncertainty also another one of topic but these two topic is related to the lab that would like to request for the accreditation that they need to to like uh, show be separated yeah but it's not the internal quality control topic oh okay okay and so you are saying internal quality control should be separate, method validation should be separate, and then measurement uncertainty should also be separate. Let's say all the part about internal quality control will be break down into different subtopics and sessions. So now we uh, will try to uh, break down into topics, but now we are collecting all the inputs. Okay. I have a request, please. I have a request, please. Please. If you can add, if you can add French for sample preparation, as it's a very important step for any analysis in any laboratory. So even um, if it's, it's in French, people will be will be informed. A, a larger number of people will be informed, so it will avoid some problems. Please, if you can add French. But is there any anyone? Uh, French speaking that is willing to give this training. You can do it, yes, so far. Of course. Yeah, we're many. We're many that can do that. We're many. Okay, because we need of names. <laughs> okay, you need names. Okay, myself, I can do. Clarice Yvette can do from Cameroon. So depending on on our availability, I will either suggest to Clarice Yvette to do it, or I do it myself. So I put that you will coordinate. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we our hope is to do all trainings in all languages. The only issue is the availability of trainers that speak those languages. That's why. Okay, can uh Filippo, would you follow up on this? Um ah look, uh, Sheikh, you, you volunteer for the sample preparation. Yes. Okay. Plus Mustafa to coordinate. Yeah. So I will uh, take contact with the, um, those who volunteer and I will call, uh, open the call for other trainers so we can start organizing the session and implement it hopefully before the end of the year or by the yeah. beginning of 2022. Yeah, perfect. So we move forward because uh, we are very late. <laughs> I'm very sorry for this. Um, so, ah, pulse time. Um, this is another topic that uh, um, the Global Soil Partnership asked us to work on. It refers to the inclusion of range values in the standard operating procedures. So basically it's a range uh, that indicates the validity of the method. For example, method X, is reliable for, for example, soil organic carbon content from X to X uh, amount. And uh, the request is to include this information in the SOPs. Uh, do you agree on including range values in the glossal and SOPs? Let me launch the poll. You are doing it, Filippo? Yes, let me launch. Uh, 
So uh, a window should have appeared in, on your screen. Uh, please say yes or no if you agree on this proposal. Maybe Christian, I know that uh, you had some remark on this because this refer to research, right? Yeah, but uh, we we have to see what is the opinion of the people. But uh, yes, I think it it's, should be more having researchers or people use how to say to to apply the results of a lab in the field, but typical lab managers will perhaps not be much. Uh... No, it's just to make sure that we don't engage in doing something we cannot do. That's my only fear. Like if information are available by literature, fine, but otherwise how can we get to this information? Yeah, only by literature, this means uh, some some working group must be working on that issue and to find, and there are so many countries and in Africa and so very diversified situations. So for me, it's a little bit, uh, it's a lot of work and perhaps involving more researchers than lab people, but I don't know, it's the people have to decide. I will close the poll now because we reached more than the majority. So we, I can show you the results. So 93% of people said yes. And indeed, yeah, we should rely on literature. I, I agree with you. But uh, just to inform you that this, you know, of course, is the feedback from this region, from Africa. And then we will compare this uh, opinion with the, those from the other regions as well. So from Latin America, Asia, and so on. So we can compare all these inputs and uh, discuss this in the Glossolam meeting in November. So now we know what you think about this. So if you agree, I took a note on the fact that uh, this requires major literature review and uh, the working group uh, uh, that we work on the SOP harmonization should uh, look after it. Um, if you all agree. <laughs> then, um, Second decisions to make us that still comes from the uh, Global Soil Partnership is for Glossolan to provide the reference values. So basically uh, an indication on the status of soil uh, and all of these should uh, facilitate the provis provision of recommendations to farmers and other stakeholders. Again, for example, um, they are asking us to say uh, okay, if the results of uh, your analysis for, for example, phosphorus is from zero to one grams per kilograms, then uh, the soil is poor of phosphorus. If it's between one and two, then it's a uh, low medium, from two to three, it's medium and so on. They are asking us to provide also this type of information. What do you think? Is this, um, is this feasible according to you or no? Maybe Filippo um, run the second poll. I'm so sorry that we are running late. Um, item three took too, uh, too long. So again, you, you have uh, the, the screen to vote uh, uh, on your screen. <laughs> And then within Glossolan, we will see the limitations. We reach majority, so. Yes, yeah, yeah. all of us, yes, basically. Okay. Perfect. Now the next uh, items is, will be all like this, eh? about, uh, about uh, voting. <laughs> There is, an end, there is an ends up from um, uh, yeah. Take sure you want to take the floor. Right. Well, in general, I have agreed with the giving the range and the reference values, but also it also means that we must specify 
the range value for the methodology that has been used. You know, because the, whether it's poor, or whether it is medium, or whether it is low, it's dependent on the methodology that has been used. So, okay, because we are establishing our methodology. So I'm sorry, I think he, it's in order. Because I think that in this case, the reference values would apply to all methods. So it, it does not depend on the method, but it depends on the parameter, no? That's my understanding. So the range value refers to the method, the, the validity, let's say, of the results for the type of method. And the reference value is just an indication of the status of soil. So whatever method you use, if you get a, a result of one, it will always mean, for example, low. No, 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 no. You say it depends on the method that has been said. Also the reference value. Uh, yes. Because two different methods is, for example, P. Olsen and P. Bray. You cannot mix the result from P. Olsen and P. Bray. You need to have reference value for P. Olsen, reference method for P. Bray. You see, for all the different methods, you need different references value. It's like an annex for each SOP. We'll have, at the end, like an annex on, let's say, these values. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Note taken. Thank you, Texture. I didn't know. <laughs> Anyone else feel like adding to this? Yeah. If not, we move to the next item, the last one. Just okay. Last item in the agenda is the governance. Let me share my screen again. So basically the governance of AfriLab was defined at the first AfriLab meeting in 2019. In that occasion, we decided to have one chair and two vice chairs, one to represent French speaking countries and one to represent English speaking countries. The mandate for these positions is two years, and the terms of reference for the position are in Annex 3 of the first April meeting, and the link is uh, here. Um, again, in that occasion, we had elections, and uh, Dr. Joseph Uponi from Nigeria was uh, elected the chair of April. The vice chair for Francophone countries uh, uh, is Dr. Ab oh my God. Abdullah Rahman uh, Mustafa, for me, Mustafa from Niger. And uh, the vice chair for Anglophone countries is Dr. Lezego Mokezi Selepe from Botswana. So first of all, I would like to thank them for taking this position and serving in these positions for these two years. Uh, uh, we really appreciate your work, so a big thanks to you all. And I will give you time uh, a lot to, to talk at the end of the meeting. Um, now we get to decision making. Uh, we have two proposals uh, uh, that relate uh, to the governance. Uh, the first one uh, builds on the external extraordinary experience of the Latin American soil uh, laboratory network, sorry, not partnership. Uh, so Latsolan. In Latsolan, they have one chair, one vice chair, and the steering committee. And the steering committee resulted to be very, very efficient to trigger actions at the regional level and support the work of the chair and vice chair. So, uh, we would like to uh, propose this model to all uh, residents. So my question to you is uh, if you would like to establish a steering committee to support the work of the chair and in this case, the two vice chairs. So basically the steering committee should help uh, the chair and vice chair to trigger action at the national and the regional level, following up with all countries. Would you welcome this idea? If uh, yes, uh, 
we will draft uh, TORs for the steering committee and send it to you all for review by email. Filippo, please uh, run the poll. Again, you will be asked to vote. So would you welcome the idea of establishing a steering committee? This can be composed by uh, five people, let's say. In Latin America, they had five, but also less countries in the region compared to Lastolan. Uh, to compare to Africa, I'm sorry, you have like 55 countries or so, which is a lot. So we can have more people in the steering committee. Let's see if we reach majority. Okay. Okay, the majority voted and the decision is uh, yes. Okay, second proposal is uh, to review the terms of preference for the chair and vice chair of uh, the region. Uh, why? Because again, we would like to give them a bit more power and put them in the real condition to trigger action in the region. For example, I would uh, uh, share with them the list of uh, and the contact also of uh, the laboratories in AfriLab so that they can do like one-to-one -one follow up as needed. And uh, also eventually, for example, for the Francophone, for the Francophone countries, uh, the vice chair for these countries can uh, do follows up in French and have a discussion, you know, that overcome the language barrier because we do our best to translate everything, also our emails in French, but we are not so fluent in French. So <laughs> we do our best, but sometimes it's difficult. So, and ultimately the idea would be to have resonance with common TORs which means that the terms of preference for the position of the chair in Africa would be the same of those of the chair in Europe, in the Pacific, in Asia, in Latin America, and so on. So would you agree on the proposal of uh, reviewing the terms of reference for the position of chair and vice chairs for Africa? Again, uh, Paul. Filippo? Yeah, it has been launched. Ah, okay, I can see it. So tell me when to stop. Mm, okay, we reached the majority. Let me show the results. Okay, yeah. is yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, we are doing it quickly because we are late. Uh, but uh, hopefully the next item will go quickly. Um, we have to review the governance of the network. As you know, we ask you all if you have any interest in uh, uh, candidating for any of uh, the current positions. So the chair, the vice chair, uh, the chair of AFRILAB, the vice chair of AFRILAB for English-speaking countries, and the vice chair of AFRILAB for French-speaking countries. Regarding the election of the chair, we received only one, uh, um, one candidature from Ms. Lezego, that is currently taking the role of vice chair for English-speaking countries. So my question to you is, um, would you agree on electing Miss uh, Lezego as uh, next AfriLab chair? And uh, if you like, I would like to give the floor to Lezego to, to say a few words in support of uh, her position. We cannot hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here. I'm kind of shocked. But um, I, I think I'm okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I have um, submitted uh, proposing for your vote in my favor. 
as the incoming chair of AfriLab. Having served as the, the vice chairperson, I believe that I have had the opportunity and the exposure to say I can, I can assist or I can be your, 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 your messenger because being the chair means being a messenger. And uh, be, if, I get, if I get your support, I, 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 I promise to do the job diligently, to, to do whatever assignment you give to me. I, I, I will try my best uh, for the benefit of the organization. And uh, that, that means ensuring that the region's uh, uh, activities are linked with the activities of Glossland and uh, ensuring the participation and, and motivation, encouraging uh, the countries, uh, African countries to, to participate in, in AfriLab. Uh, I, I think that's all that I can say. I'm, I'm humbled uh, uh, because I believe uh, AfriLab can go somewhere if we all of us participate. Uh, I'm hoping that you will support me uh, uh, with those few words. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to me. Thank you, Lazego. Thank you. So please sure. open the poll. I think that was very inspiring. And I can ensure she, she has been doing a great job over these two years. So would you agree on having Miss Lazego to lead the, the, the network? Yes, so you are the new chair of AfriLab. So congratulations, Lezego. It's a pleasure to have you as a new chair of AfriLab. And I thank Joseph for really his service over these two years. That was very great as well. Now, elections, but still like where the elections, because we have only one candidate for the position of uh, vice chair for English speaking countries. In this case, we have uh, Texture from Zimbabwe. Texture, would you like to say a few words to the network? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what to say, but I'm really uh, humbled. But what I can promise is that I will do my best over 100% and give all my energy to ensure that the constituency that elects me, I won't let it down. I've had quite some experience, which I would like to share with my colleagues uh, in various uh, capacity building and various workshops like uh, organizations like Nusesa Network of Union, Scientific Equipment of South Africa, SPAONA, which was Soil and Plant Analysis Laboratory Network of Africa, where I first met Joseph Uponi, and also I've been a beneficiary of quite a number of programs. Capacity building, which has been led by the, um, by uh, uh, both, F, uh, department DFDI and also uh, Commonwealth. So I've been, I've been a beneficiary uh, visiting the British Geological Survey as well as University of Nottingham. And this has given me the opportunity of sharing with my colleagues there and then after. The same was this, the same for Spawner as, as well. After training from uh, uh, Nigeria on two occasions, two workshops, we started having a number of workshops in Zimbabwe where we had regional workshops and definitely I was one of the coordinators and also one of the presenters. So I want to share my experience. I know a little, but uh, I know something in uh, cell chemistry, cell physics, and cell uh, uh, microbiology. So uh, uh, it would be nice to share with you. I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dexter. And I can uh, uh, witness that you are a very hard worker and you added a lot of contributions to Rosalind. So thank you so much. 
Filippo, please launch the poll. Uh, if uh, colleagues in the network agree on having Texture as next uh, vice chair of Africa for English speaking countries. Yes, Texture, congratulations. <laughs> now you will get to work even harder. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for electing me. I'm humbled. I will not let you down, I promise. I'll work with the chair so that we, we deliver the goods. Thank you. Thank you, Texture. And now, elections with some competition for the position of uh, the Africa vice chair for French speaking countries. We have two candidates. Actually, I have to apologize that I didn't put the pictures of the candidates uh, uh, actually to, for all candidates, but I didn't have them. That's the only reason why. Um, so I would like to give the floor to both uh, Mr. Rolf and uh, Mr. Sheik in this order. So Mr. Rolf from uh, Gabon, the floor is yours. I believe that you can um, talk in uh, French because yes. you have to convince your audience. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Merci, merci à tous. Donc, je suis Rolf Mabika Obama enseignant-chercheur à l'Université des sciences et techniques de Massoukou, à l'Institut national d'agronomie, des biotechnologies. J'ai un doctorat en sciences de sol spécialisé à la matière organique. Donc, je, mes travaux portent essentiellement sur la séquestration du carbone dans les sols. Pourquoi je présente ma candidature aujourd'hui? Tout simplement, quand, quand, puisque nous l'avons constaté, Aprilab aujourd'hui prend une place importante dans le gros salon. Mais pour que nous continuions à jouer ce rôle-là, nous devons redynamiser les réseaux nationaux. Quand ce que j'entends par redynamiser les réseaux nationaux, c'est faciliter ou favoriser les échanges entre les différents laboratoires. Parce qu'on a le, le sentiment que j'ai aujourd'hui, c'est que nous ne nous, nous retrouvons que lors des meetings de Afrilab alors que le travail doit se poursuivre entre les, 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 les différents laboratoires, c'est de voir la possibilité de, de favoriser les échanges entre chercheurs, enseignants-chercheurs de nos différentes universités et instituts de recherche, mais aussi voir la possibilité de répondre ensemble aux appels d'offres, parce que nous savons que le gros problème des laboratoires africains, c'est l'absence de matériel. Alors que si nous répondons ensemble, que nous candidatons ensemble aux appels d'offres, nous pouvons équiper nos laboratoires et par conséquent faire un travail plus conséquent et plus rigoureux. Je prends l'engagement aujourd'hui, si je suis élu au poste de vice-président pour les pays francophones, de travailler à la redynamisation de Afilab, de consacrer... 40% de mon temps à construire une collaboration franche et rigoureuse entre les différents réseaux nationaux pour que plus que jamais Afilab joue son rôle qui est celui-là dans le Grossoland. Je vous remercie et merci déjà pour vos votes. My French is very poor, but I think you are over, right? Yes. Yeah, merci beaucoup, Rolf. Merci very beaucoup, Rolf. On y va donner la parole à l'autre candidat. Et now we listen to Rolf. I will give now the floor to the other candidate. Um, on y va donner la parole à Monsieur Songe Sheikh Soge de Djibouti, uh, another, the other candidate for the position of uh, vice chair for the French speaking country. So, Sheikh, c'est l'autre candidat pour la position de vice-président de Frila pour les pays francophones. Uh, okay. Just a second, uh, let me... Um, okay, now we should be able... Yes, can you, can you speak? Yes. 
is still as an interpreter, so you have to remove it from the interpreter. Let me wait, let me. And actually, we would like to thank um, Mr. Sheikh because he has been doing the simultaneous interpretation for French. I don't know why I cannot relate the. You have to remove the interpretation. Yeah, table. okay, now you should be able to speak. Uh, vous m'entendez? Yeah. Can you oui. hear me, please? Yes. Yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for this uh, incredible meeting. Uh, je m'appelle Sougechek, je suis originaire de Djibouti. Je suis candidat au poste de vice-président à Frila pour les pays francophones. Je suis chercheur au Centre d'études et de recherche de Djibouti. Je suis uh, titulaire d'un doctorat en sciences du sol de Sorbonne Université. Je parle plusieurs langues. I can speak uh, several languages, français, anglais et arabe means that uh, j'ai aussi eu l'occasion de travailler dans plusieurs pays, le Maroc, l'Inde, le Vietnam, la France et Djibouti. Uh, je peux facilement parler au, un autre continent africain en Asie et faire des, des liens entre ces continents. Je peux aussi imaginer les conditions de travail dans ces, dans ces pays-là et les façons de créer des liens avec notre réseau. AfriLab avec l'Afrique, avec l'Europe et j'ai aussi des contacts avec d'autres réseaux comme le euh, euh, 4 per mille, comme on dit, le four per mille, et je connais aussi la, la responsable, il n'y a pas une chose, rien, rien qui peut dépasser, euh, qui, qui dépasse nos capacités en tant que ce scientif, euh, scientifique africain. Donc, euh, si vous votez pour moi, je suis prêt à consacrer 60% de mon temps euh, à comment faire des liens entre nous, d'abord discuter entre nous, écrire des projets ensemble, travailler avec d'autres réseaux, et euh, please, I can maybe say some uh, few words in, 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 uh, in, in English, all, I have several, uh, I speak several languages, English, French, Arabic, I can easily speak with Africa, Europe, and other countries. I have worked in several countries, uh, India, Morocco, Vietnam, France. I know the working condition in these countries and the way of, of the ways of making connection. So there is not a single thing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity as African scientists. We can do whatever we set our mind to do if we do it together. Let's mark this meeting in history. Let's open the door to the voice of our network AfriLab. Inscrivons cette réunion dans l'histoire, ouvrons la porte à la voix de notre réseau AfriLab et merci pour votre confiance. Merci beaucoup, Sheikh. Merci à Rolf aussi. Thanks to all of you. So now we will open the poll. J'ouvre la questionnaire pour les lessions. S'il vous plaît, votez. Euh, un moment. OK. Vous pouvez voter. You can vote. Okay, we reach the majority. Uh, partage les résultats. So congratulations to Dr. Sheikh and uh, also congratulations to Mr. Rolf for uh, candidating. <laughs> and please, I hope we will you will have better chance next uh, time. But thank you so much for for volunteering to take this position. So yeah, Dr. Mr. Sheikh is the new vice chair for AfriLab for French speaking countries. So congratulations. And uh, thank you everyone. That was the end of uh, um, our meeting. I would like to just give the floor to Dr. Uponi and Mustafa. Uh, that covered the position of former chair at this point of AfriLab and former vice chair of AfriLab for French speaking countries for the closing remarks, because I'm sure we will be listening more from the new chair and vice chairs in the coming uh, weeks and months. So, Dr. Uponi, if you would like to 
say uh, a few words. Thank you, Lucrezia. I am really excited about the outcome of the elections. I have very good confidence that uh, Lesego and the Tick Show will move us to much higher grounds. Our people have worked with. I worked with uh, Lesego for these two years, and I know she's uh, she has the strength and passion to be able to take this network forward. I've worked with uh, Tick Show for over twenty years, and. Uh, I know too that it's a person full of energy. I expect that uh, we will make much, much more progress with the new elections. And then with uh, Sheikh, well, yeah, I hope we'll interact a bit more. I, I'm going to sharpen my French a bit so I can communicate a bit more in French. Yeah, um, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, oh, I and mean, you speak English too, so that's okay. Yeah. Uh, on in closing, I want to really appreciate the. Uh, the uh, Secretariat for being very helpful and supportive throughout my tenure. And uh, uh, I can't count the kind of appreciation I can give to Lucrecia and Filippo, especially Lucrecia from the very beginning. Uh, I really look forward to the network becoming uh, a force to reckon with as far as uh, agricultural practices and especially soil and plant analysis are concerned in Africa. I'm um, uh, saying a big cheers to uh, all the people who attended the meeting this time and actually participated in selecting our new leaders. And I want to appeal that we all give them the maximum support at the time like this. Nobody can do this work alone. Uh, prompt them if you need to. Uh, and uh, now that we are going to also get some more powers, use it fruitfully. Thank you so much, everyone for the wonderful opportunity to serve. Of course, I'm still readily available to serve in other capacities, but it's good to have some new blood. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Mustafa, the floor is uh, for you, for your closing remark. Mustafa, I remember, vice chair, former vice chair of Africa for French speaking countries. Merci, Lucrezia, et bonjour à tous. J'aimerais dire félicitations à l'équipe qui vient de quitter la gouvernance. En premier lieu, Monsieur Joseph Hipponi, je vous félicite pour tout ce que vous avez fourni comme effort dans la, dans la réalisation de ce qu'on a dû faire comme activité. Ça a été un succès. En dépit du COVID-19 qui a empêché les activités de se faire convenablement, il a été... Il a été fantastique ce qu'on a pu réaliser. Voilà, à l'ESOGO, double félicitation, tu as fait des parfaites prestations et maintenant, il t'est donné la charge de, de, de mener le, la, la Free Lab. Je te souhaite un bon succès. Tu as, tu as, tu as entouré de bonnes personnes en tout cas. TechShore nous confirme qu'il a une bonne capacité avec son expérience, ça sera, ça sera fantastique pour vous de travailler. Je ne connais pas assez le nouveau, le nouveau vice de, de, de French speaking country, mais je suis convaincu de par son expérience. J'ai vu de ses, de, de ses activités écrites. J'ai pu dire qu'il sera capable de, de, de faire. Je, je, suis, je suis sûr et certain que l'équipe qu'on vient de mettre en place est à mesure de mener à bien les activités. Un conseil que je vous donnerai, c'est surtout la patience. Sans patience, on ne peut rien réaliser, franchement. Elle a été difficile, mais rien n'est indomptable. Vous pouvez le faire. Bon courage à vous, bon courage à vous. Et au francophone, je dirais, travailler euh, en famille. Les anglophones ne sont pas des ennemis, c'est des amis. Veuillez vous approcher davantage, faites en sorte que les activités se passent très bien. Je réserve ma toute grande félicitation à Lucrezia Kaon, que je remercie beaucoup pour son soutien moral dans tout ce que j'ai pu faire comme activité. Benedetti, Filippo, je ne peux pas t'oublier. Merci infiniment à tous et bon courage à l'équipe qui vient de prendre l'activité. Merci, à plus tard. Many thanks, uh, Mustafa. I, I got something and your words were very nice. So thank you so much. Um, I would like to close the meeting now. I would actually like to give the, the floor to the new chair and vice chair, but we are, we are so late <laughs> that I feel we have to postpone it. So congratulations again for the new chair and vice chairs. 
Many thanks to you all for having been with us for so long and really apologize for the delay. We will uh, do follow-ups by email. We will send you the report of the meeting uh, as well as the link to access the recording and the presentations given during this meeting. Thanks a lot for your support and I wish you a very good day. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.